Call to order the April 6, 2023 City of Ojai Parks and Recreation Commission meeting to order. Can we get the roll call, please? Chair Taylor. Present. Vice Chair Inner. Present. Commissioner Fireson. Here. Commissioner Wilson. Here. Commissioner Ruff. Here. And Commissioner Walker will not be joining us this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Commissioner Ruff, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And do we have anyone here uh, that would like to speak in the public comments uh, items not on the agenda? No? Okay, moving right along. Thank you. We have a big agenda, so this is helpful. Thank you. Um, Luis, can you please present the police report? Of course. So for the month of March, uh, they were lower than average calls for service, uh, starting with the skate park. Uh, again, for the month of March, there was no calls for service. At Livery Park, there was five calls for service, two extra patrols noted, two arrests made, and zero calls unrelated to recreation. At Zero Zodi Park, uh, there's uh, no calls for service, two extra patrols noted, and one call unrelated to recreation. For City Hall campus, there is one call for service, one extra patrol noted, and four calls unrelated to recreation. At Club Vista Park, there is one extra patrol noted, and for Rotary and Daily Ranch Park, there is no calls for service or other activity noted. Um, any indication when you spoke with the um, Sheriff's Department, what did something change at the skate park that's unusual for us to have such a low the, the, um, rain, maybe, or I mean? We did receive a lot of rain, uh, which could have contributed to the lower amount of calls. Mm -hmm. um, and the public works uh, report, um, we will note that there's some graffiti, but other than that, mm -hmm. um, there's really not much there. I mean, it's nice, nice yes. that there's no <laughs> calls for service. <laughs> I'm just wondering if they did something different, sometimes just a, pr a presence as a deterrent, uh, um, whatever they're doing, that's great, keep it up. I I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of the uh, things I did speak with uh, Chief Newman, uh, just to let her know uh, about uh, the practice of when deputies uh, had the availability to do the police reports there in the parking lot. And so um, she assured that uh, that is still happening. That will continue. Okay, great. Very good. Wonderful. Thank you. Moving on to the public works report. Also, Luis. So beginning with uh, Clef Vista Park, uh, seasonal pruning continued. Uh, irrigation was shut off, and that was across all, all parks uh, due to the amount of rain that we received. Uh, Daily Ranch Park, uh, lawn repair is in progress. At Libby Park, um, there's a weekly, fountain, uh, weekly maintenance uh, for the fountain, uh, as well as a playground inspection that happens once a month in addition <coughs> to sanitation. Um, there's also uh, tree removals due to failure, um, which that's in progress. Uh, we had two sycamores in a valley oak uh, that failed due to root system. Uh, that was a lot of, um, the roots were in the, the creekway, and so because we had so much water, oh, yeah, so one fell it away. and caused the other ones to, to fall as well. At the skate park, uh, graffiti was found and removed in the restroom area. At Rotary Park, seasonal pruning continues. Zero Zodi, um, the trash enclosure in the lower parking lot was removed and asphalt repair is in progress. Uh, picnic areas were cleaned and sanitized. Um, in addition, there is a playground inspection and sanitation. Um, and a shared, uh, the irrigation system was also shut off at, at Zero Zodi uh, due to the amount of rain received. And that concludes the public works report. The, are the, the irrigation still off? Everything's so green still. Uh, yes, yeah, it's very, still off. Yeah, it's still off for the time being. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, moving on to the consent items, we have our uh, minutes from March second, twenty twenty three, that are included in our packet, and also the um, gymnasium floor restoration project. Anybody have any questions? Has everybody had an opportunity to review them? Yeah. Any concerns or questions? Comments? 
The report on the floor was nice. Thank you. It's nice to see those pictures too. I'll make a motion to approve the consent items. Yeah, I'll second. Thank you, Luis. Uh, of course, Commissioner Fryer, sir. Yes. Vice Chair Edner. Yes. Chair Taylor. Yes. Commissioner Wilson. Yes. Motion passes. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. And moving right along. Wow. We are at our presentation actions and discussion items for the evening. Um, so we have several on our agenda. We'll start with uh, a pickleball um, ad hoc update. I believe we have a PowerPoint as well. So we will receive the report and then um, I do have a couple of speakers unless there's a speaker that would absolutely like to speak before that's fine also. Typically I like to do the presentation first and then perhaps that might answer some of the questions. Did I see another speaker card, um, Louise? Or is it just, I just have three? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, our ad hoc um, committee members are both present. Is there the collaborated um, presentation or would one of you like to start yeah. or another? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, we'll start and uh, Commissioner Firestone will uh, take over at a certain point, and okay, uh, thank you. I think uh, um, I, guess, I guess the best thing is just to go through go through the slides, and uh, then we can entertain questions or. Great. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, well, so you uh, uh, why, what, how, and why did we do this? Um, we were tasked, the ad hoc committee was tasked by the Ojai City Council and the Parks and Rec Commission to essentially gather information and analyze options uh, regarding the situation of pickleball courts within the city or elsewhere in the Ojai Valley. So uh, between March 2020, 2022, when we uh, got the charge from the commission through March 2023, we met as a committee 17 times we received and reviewed more than 150 public comments. We reviewed every identifiable option uh, for public pickleball facilities that we could find. <laughs> uh, we consulted with pickleball sound mitigation experts and we undertook uh, several other research activities which are detailed in the report. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the report was written with the objective of supporting sound decisions and lasting resolutions that reduce the conflicts among community stakeholders. We very much wanted to be able to come to the commission and with the commission's uh, agreement forward to the city council, a set of recommendations that, had, uh, that were clear and uh, could be implemented uh, with uh, full knowledge of what they would entail. So that, that was our objective. Uh, it will be up to you to tell us whether we met that or not. <laughs> um, next. Um, so um, in the final report, <coughs> uh, uh, you'll, uh, you'll find that it provides a detailed history and context describing the concerns of the pickleball community, residents, and the tennis community which are the uh, main stakeholders in this conversation. It also documents uh, findings and recommendations that led to the committee's five recommendations. Uh, it offers a very comprehensive strategies for addressing the current issues and avoiding future -ish problems related to pickleball facilities and play, which was, I think, something that the city council was interested in particularly. And we do outline intermediate, near-term, and or, excuse me, immediate, near-term, and long-term actions that can be taken in a cooperative, collaborative manner if all interested and responsible parties are willing. Uh, so just to give you some context here, uh, in early, uh, in 2017, that's when the first pickleball play started at Matillaha Middle School. In 2018-19, there was short-term limited play at Lower Libby Tennis Courts. 
there was a growing number of players and inconsistent access uh, to uh, Matillaha in particular led uh, to a request to the city for a permanent facility. In August 2019, city council approved use of a neglected tennis court on City Hall campus for four pickleball courts. Uh, that was a unanimous approval. Um, court conversion leveraged significant financial and labor support from the pickleball community. Uh, play began in January 2020. Noise complaint claim for damages came into the city by March 2020. And sound mitigation measures and restricted hours were put in place by summer of 2020. Um, here's a financial context, <clears throat> a summary of expenditures to date. Um, so uh, we have the specific categories of the expenditures, uh, those that were paid by the city of Ojai, those that were paid by pickleball community, and then we have the category totals. So as you can see, um, the city of Ojai, including the most recent uh, uh, sound study, has uh, uh, invested $37,869. Pickleball community has invested $12,135 for the courts out here for a total of $50,004. Um, <clears throat> uh, moving on to our key findings, uh, one of the things we were looking at both for immediate and long-term planning is the rate of pickleball growth. Uh, we've had many people come before us and tell us how pickleball is the fastest growing sport, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, we took a look at the local figures and our local, uh, in our local community, the growth uh, it pretty much follows the national trend, but I think when we see it like this, um, it's, it's easier to understand. Um, and uh, in 2018, uh, and these numbers come from a contemporaneous recording by the pickleball ambassador who would daily take a snapshot count and record on the calendar. So they were recorded as they were happening. And as with any open recreation sport, it's going to be a snapshot of a particular time. So if there's 10 people on the court at 10 a.m., that was the count. If there were two more people that came 15 minutes later, they're not necessarily there. But this gives us a good sense of, uh, of, of the growth, which is what we were looking at, the growth trend. So 2018, there was 1,412 participation. One person, one day, that's a participation. And this goes along with you know, standard practice in recreation. By 2019, it had grown to 2,336. And it goes all the way up to, we had to do some extrapolation for 2022 because uh, there was a change in the way uh, the count was done. It was only done for weekday mornings, five days a week. So we had to extrapolate, uh, but uh, 11, over 11,000, almost 12,000 participation. Uh, I think another way to understand this and maybe clearer way is to look at average daily participation. So, we, you know, that's a function of the number of days uh, courts were available and, uh, and the total participation and figuring out an average. So the average went from uh, 2019, uh, in 2019-10 average daily participation to average daily participation of 33. So, you know, tripling uh, uh, in, those, in those years. Um, so uh, that just gives us a sense that the Popularity here is matching or exceeding national trends. Um, we also um, had some key findings vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, sites and facilities. Um, so very early on, we asked for from uh, Luis a list of all uh, properties owned by the city, whether there was something there or not. <laughs> so all. Uh, and to look at the size and the location and so forth. So we were particularly looking for city-owned properties, first criteria, city-owned properties that were large enough to accommodate regulation size pickleball courts 
uh, at a distance uh, from residences. And uh, at that point in time, we didn't have a specific number in mind, but we knew that uh, we would want, you know, we would want to be uh, at least 100 feet from residences. So Sarasota Park, Libby Park, and City Hall Campus were the only properties within the that the city owned that could possibly meet any of this, these criteria. Uh, city Hall Campus, there really isn't enough open space. We went out there and physically measured the space be behind Kent Hall, which is really the only available space. It was too small. Uh, could not fit actually uh, one regulation court there. Uh, Sarasota Park has a master plan that's in process and it really precludes any additional new facilities and the park's also close to residences. Uh, in, our, in the course of our uh, work, we did discover that the gym might be available for occasional indoor play uh, on, on Saturdays, but it's also being used by gymnastics and basketball. So that has to be worked out. Uh, Libby Park tennis courts, uh, allowing pickleball play would create a poor precedent. It would diminish open recreation space uh, and it would create significant financial, annual financial burden. Seoul Park, which was mentioned here by many, many folks, <laughs> um, was added to our consideration in September 2022 when the prospect for city programming and facilities was announced. Prior to that, uh, we, it, it was not city, it, there was not a reason to think the city could necessarily uh, do anything in Seoul Park. So the site does meet requirements for space for distances from residents, and it's an excellent option if and when the city and county agreement is in place and funds for construction can be secured. Uh, we also looked at sound, sound policies and sound mitigation I uh, just want to offer this definition, these a couple of definitions here. The human perception of sound, this comes from our uh, consultant's report, Pickleball Sound Mitigation. The human ear is sensitive to a sound's level, its frequency content, its duration, and its frequency of occurrence. All of these contribute to annoyance. The higher the sound level, the greater the annoyance becomes. Annoyance annoyance of a sound also is also relative to the background sound levels of an environment. Uh, sound must be louder than the background level for it to be perceived. Um, excuse me. Uh, and uh, based on multiple uh, tests, the ob objective measurements of sound here at the City Hall campus uh, uh, courts uh, do not suggest violations of the current city noise standards and limits, or, and also not at any of the prospective pickleball sites that we looked at. Um, so as I mentioned, our consultants, are their acoustical consultants, um, uh, they uh, provided uh, recommended sound limits at residential property line, which is, which is what the city code specifies at the city property line, at the residential property line. And they gave us uh, rec uh, recommended sound limits that are specific for pickleball relative to the background sound levels, more restrictive than the city code. And based on the consultant's experience in other communities and residents, typical nuisance perception thresholds. And here's a, you know here's a point that I think is worth making. Sound is a measurable uh, uh, entity. Noise is a individual perception. Uh, so as as with most cities, our 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 noise policy is based on sound measurement. Uh, PMS conduct, PSM conducted background sound and pickleball sound metering at the City Hall courts, Lower Libby Tennis Courts, and at Seoul Park Pickleball Court, or the paddle courts there. Uh, and they provided recommendations for sound mitigation at each of these sites to satisfy their recommended sound limits. And the next slide will show us uh, those recommended uh, sound limits. Um, so as you see, they, 
um, measured, these are uh, measurements at the nearest property line, which is an important thing, nearest property to a particular site is what, where we start. Uh, the background sound level at the property line, we have PSM's recommended maximal, maximum acceptable sound limit, and these are in decibels, which is a standard uh, sound measurement. And the average pickleball sound at the nearest property line, and this was in a, this was a PSM's um, scenario where they had a, um, they uh, had a older paddle and a harder hitting player specifically hitting uh, pickleballs over and over again as they did their testing. So it, it's a worst case scenario. This would be the loudest uh, the sound would be in, in, in uh, given the, the paddle and the player. Uh, so any other sounds, any other sounds would be lower than this. And uh, they also gave us the amount of sound reduction required to comply with their guidelines. And they gave some uh, mitigation recommendations. So as you can see, nearest residents to city hall courts, 100 feet. They measured a background level of 55 decibels. They recommended a maximum of 58 as an acceptable one. And the average sound of their, of their hard, their worst case was 63 decibels. So that would require a reduction of five decibels in order to meet those guidelines. They recommended quieter paddles and balls, and they also recommended more and higher sound barriers uh, up to, I think, 30 feet. Uh, Libby Park, lower tennis courts, the nearest residence is 240. Um, and you see the sound is lower, the background sound is lower, therefore the uh, standard or the guideline would be lower, um, but it you know, could be lowered, but it would require a barrier at the top of the hill. Seoul Park, the nearest residence is over 1,200 feet away. Background level there is uh, lower than it is here, so a lower acceptable level, um, but the measurement was predicted uh, at, the at the nearest property. They didn't go to the nearest property but there wouldn't appear to be any need to do any kind of mitigation in order to meet the guidelines there. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Commissioner Firestone now to go through our recommendations. That all was background, um, summarizing about 15, 16 pages. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Okay. And um, these recommendations uh, are paraphrasing the more detailed text in the report. We tried to fit it into slides here. Uh, so the first recommendation is guidelines for measuring pickleball sound and setting noise limits should be based on background noise levels and used to assess the suitability of any pickleball site in the city of Ojai. Um, the only cost that we see associated with this, and I'll go into the details afterwards, is possibly the city purchasing um, more sophisticated sound level meters than they currently have. It should be in the neighborhood of $500 to $1,000. Um, so this is the, the meat of the recommendation. The following guidelines should be used to assess the suitability of any pickleball site in the city of Ojai. Uh, pickleball sound limits measured at the nearest residential property line. If the background sound is at or below 47 decibels, uh, measured with the, the LAEQ means um, an A weighting, which we have details in the report about what that means. EQ means an, an average over a period of time. Um, so that background would be, um, sorry, if the background sound is 47 or below, then the limit for pickleball sound would be 50 decibels measured with uh, um, the fast setting on the sound meter. And again, there's details of what these settings mean in the report and those settings are important. We've definitely gotten a lot of um, feedback from the public on that uh, and a lot of help from um, PSM, the consultants, in kind of understanding the different settings. Uh, if the background sound level is above 47 decibels, um, then the noise limit would be three decibels uh, above that background sound level, but measured with the, the fast setting. 
Um, these are the recommendations directly from the acoustical consultants. Um, we, uh, in kind of accepting their recommendations, um, we did some testing to make sure that uh, what they recommended was an accessible test. That was um, part of their motivation for specifying things the way they did. And we found that we needed to add a little more detail um, to the, the recommendation to have a test that was well specified. Um, so we included that the sound measurements should be an um, average over 10 separate readings. Uh, and each of those readings would be done over 10 seconds and it's looking for the maximum value within those 10 seconds. Um, there's more details in the final report about the specifications. Um, and important to emphasize that these are not intended to be used as an enforcement mechanism. So this is not like a recommended amendment to the city code, but rather to assess the current and potential sites for suitability. So for the current uh, city hall courts, this would be to um, gauge the effectiveness of mitigation measures, which we talk about. Uh, and for uh, and also to inform decisions um, about hours and days of play at the city hall courts. Uh, and then for candidate sites, this would be to assess their suitability and understand what types of sound mitigation measures would be required to make those suitable sites. Um, just to put some numbers to this, um, the background sound measurements made by uh, PSM at the city hall courts were 55 decibels. Uh, we saw that in the previous table. At Libby Park were 45 decibels and Seoul Park were 47 decibels. And so the implications of that would be that the, the limits for pickleball sound would be 58 decibels at the city hall courts and 50 decibels at the Libby Park and Seoul Park locations. All right. Next slide. Recommendation two, uh, the city should adopt a long-term plan to expand pickleball to additional locations with sufficient space to add between eight and 12 courts, restrooms and other amenities as needed, and with noise levels within the re recommendation one guidelines at nearest residential properties. The Soul Park parking lot next to the paddle sport area would be a suitable location, uh, cost to be determined. So we encourage the city of Ojai to work with the county of Ventura to pursue this plan and to collaborate with Ojai pickleball and tennis organizations to realize a quality facility on the site. Uh, alternative sites within the city of Ojai could also be considered, including sharing or leasing uh, Ojai Unified School District properties should the district be willing to partner with the city. Um, and just some other notes, as we mentioned, there is some opportunity for limited indoor pickleball play at Sarzati Park that could be explored. Uh, we haven't identified any other city-owned properties that would be suitable for the expansion of pickleball. Uh, the third recommendation, the city of Ojai should not introduce pickleball to the current Libby Park tennis courts. Uh, we don't see it as practical to maintain dual use courts or to repeatedly convert the courts between pickleball and tennis to support Ojai Valley Tennis Club events. Uh, the addition of pickleball on the courts would detract from the quality of the tennis play, both in terms of access to the courts as well as uh, sound on the courts. Uh, and then the effectiveness of the sound mitigation that was recommended by PSM, which would be a sound barrier at the top of the hill, nearest the residents uh, is uncertain given the complexity of the topography in that area. So it would be a, a risky proposition. Uh, recommendation four, the city of Ojai should continue to allow pickleball at the city hall courts and the city should work with the pickleball community to reduce sound levels in the near term and for the long term. Uh, the recommended city hall court sound level reduction measures would be to encourage use of the uh, PSM recommended quieter paddles, they maintain a blue list, and quieter balls. Uh, and we describe a no fee paddle certification program um, that could help support that. Uh, we also recommend supplying a variety of blue list paddles as loaner paddles um, for pickleball play at the city hall courts. And also providing the PSM recommended uh, low sound balls um, that are regulation balls. Uh, also encouraging harder hitting players to use only the two western courts 
Um, these are the ones furthest from the nearest residential property lines and actually add about uh, 30 feet of space uh, to the property lines. Uh, we have some more details on, on that in the, the final report. Um, and I'll say I'll pause here to say that um, our approach to this is to, um, you know, it, it's not to provide uh, a set of enforcement strategies, but um, really strategies for the pickleball community uh, to enforce themselves with the support of the city. And um, the, uh, I guess the, the end result would be uh, at the end of the year when the agreement about the hours of play at the city hall courts um, are over, um, this would then inform um, what revised hours or days of play should be. So if the community can regulate themselves and get the sound levels down, um, that should encourage the city to consider uh, more hours of play. And if the community can't get the sound levels down below what we're uh, recommending as guidelines, then um, the city should consider uh, reduced hours or days of play. Um, which we get into, I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. Um, also, we're uh, recommending to offer property owners at 408 and 410 South Ventura Street portable, reasonably priced fountains for their properties as a means of masking noise. This was a strategy described by the consultants, um, wherein a, kind of a more pleasant noise masks um, the, the sound of something less pleasant. Um, and again, to, to provide some key numbers, uh, the background sound level that was measured by uh, PSM was 55 decibels. Um, the recommended limit, therefore, at the residential property lines would be 58 decibels. Uh, PSM, in um, their testing, measured um, 63 decibels. Uh, again, this was kind of a worst case methodology. Um, our uh, ad hoc committee in um, testing out the, the recommended guidelines um, happened to measure uh, play for you know, more typical play, but using the recommended guidelines and found uh, 59 to 61 decibels. Um, so all of that put together suggests we're looking for sound reduction in the neighborhood of one to four decibels uh, measured with the, the fast setting. And um, from uh, the consultants, the estimated impact of quieter balls and paddles could be up to 10 decibels. Um, and then um, our estimate of uh, the impact of moving the harder hitting players 30 feet further away could be up to two decibels. Uh, fifth recommendation, given the unique central established location of the City Hall Courts, the City of Ojai should consider altering the hours of play when the legal agreement governing the current hours expires after January 1st, 2024. Uh, and this is what I alluded to in the previous recommendation. Uh, implementing the recommended measures in recommendation for now would provide approximately six months to monitor pickleball sound levels and determine if this level of mitigation satisfies the guidelines, that's recommendation one. If the measures consistently succeed in meeting the guidelines, consider increasing hours and access while other long-term expansion options are pursued. And if the measures consistently fail in meeting the guidelines, consider keeping the current play times versus reducing hours and or days of play and some other things that uh, would need to be considered uh, by the city in making that decision is to what extent and when the sound is outside of the re recommended guidelines, uh, how many nearby residents are uh, personally disturbed by the sound, and what future precedent is the city setting as it weighs the benefits of pickleball versus the nuisance of noise. So okay. if, if I could just add a couple of things, because uh, uh, I know there's been concerns and questions uh, recently and in the past about uh, enforcement of re pedal requirements. Um, of what? Pedal. pedal requirements. And, you know, there, uh, there currently is a requirement to use paddles from something that's called the green list. It comes from a, um, a gated community in uh, Arizona. Uh, it's, uh, they, uh, they have disclaimers. I, I 
I printed off the latest ones. They have disclaimers that it's really for their internal use, but they allow, you know, they, they make it public. It's a very long list. Um, there's not, I wasn't able to find any information about how they actually determine their acceptable paddles, but a lot of people refer to this green list and they use this green list. The PSM blue list is a list of paddles that they have um, rigorously tested and determined uh, to what extent they are uh, less noisy compared to other paddles. One big difference I want to point out is that the green list is updated once a year, uh, but it has it it just continue, it sometimes takes paddles off, but it mostly just adds. So it has a lot of older paddles. The PSM blue list is in is focused on the newer paddles, and the newer pa and the manufacturers are focused on not only how the paddles affect play, but how it affects the sound, the noise, because they understand this is a, this is a challenge. Um, so their, their paddle, the blue list is uh, also one that they update more frequently because as a PSM, sorry, uh, they make it available on their Facebook page, Pickleball Sound Mitigation, and on their website. And they test as new paddles come out, they test those paddles. Um, so it's a more, uh, it's actually a, a higher standard than the green list. Uh, I'll just disclose personally, my paddle isn't on their blue list. Both my paddles isn't on their, aren't on their blue list. So if I wanted to keep under these recommendations, if I wanted to keep playing here, uh, I would either have to use a loaner paddle or I'd have to buy new paddles, but I wouldn't be able to use those paddles there. Um, the other thing I want to say is that the, the idea we came up with with the paddle registration, putting stickers on the ends of paddles, makes it easy to actually gauge how many people are um, uh, following the guidelines. Right now, unless you want to go and look at, uh, 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 this is the current green list. If you want to go and look at this list, that's the only way you can tell if somebody is in compliance, okay? Uh, it's alphabetical, so it's, but it by would brand, take by brand name, by brand name and, and but to, that's the only way to tell. There's no way to tell by sound or just by looking. With the idea that we uh, are proposing stickers, just look at the handle, and you'll know whether it's a you know it's a registered paddle, which means it's it has been approved. It's on the PSM list, and all the loaner paddles would be from the PSM list. So you know we think it's. Again, it's very hard to enforce things on public courts, but we think that that would be at least one way to do it without a gate attendant, for example, like they have it in some places. So, what's the average price on a paddle? I don't own one. Well, average. I, I don't know what the average is because some of them are now really expensive. So, in our cost recommendations, we our low end is two hundred dollars a paddle, mm -hmm. and our high end is something like. Four hundred dollars a paddle. Wow. So, and we were, you know, so six paddles, something like that, is what we put in the estimated cost. So the recommendation is to use the blue list, not the green list. Right. And so the blue list sounds like it caters as to performance and sound. So, are they testing any of the lower end paddles, or not particularly? The low, what do you, the lower price. Oh yes, they te they test the whole range. Okay. Uh, it's, I would say mostly what they're doing though is testing the newer paddles, and they're not they're manufactured. You're saying as right. they evolve. Uh, right. And those that still meet the sound standards stay on the list. Those that get outdated get dropped. Right. Okay. That's that's my understanding. What causes them to be outdated? I'm just they might just improve the, yeah, the yeah. sound so, mitigation like like so much model that if you, yeah, mm -hmm. if you fall right. off. Also, uh, pedal manufacturers will just stop manufacturing mm -hmm. certain paddles. And given, given the um, concern about noise, uh, you know, this is something very much on the mind of the pedal manufacturers. And it has to do with the materials that are inside the paddles often. And so there's, you know, uh, they are working on it. And, and many of the paddles that I see on the courts are on this list. Um, including the quietest one on the list. We have the a player list. on the blue list. They, we have a player using that. So it is, in a, I mean, it is a, um, 
you know, the people who manufacture paddles don't want the sport to go away. <laughs> so it, of all people, they sort of have the most, you know, dollars on the, on the, uh, on the table. And so it behooves them to create uh, quieter paddles that still are, allow people to play the game that they want to play. So, and then the other addition is, of course, we haven't, I don't think there's a requirement for quieter balls, but PSM also, ha also tests balls and has a list of balls that also uh, put how uh, much quieter they are uh, as one of the standard balls that have been used for a long time. And all, most of, several of those brands have been used on this court and customarily uh, people only play with the balls that are at the court that are kept by the Almost pickle, provided, right, that are provided by the pickleball club. So that wouldn't be any kind of change. It would just be the, you know, purchasing balls from this particular list and, uh, and using them. I thought that that was already being done, but maybe I'm mistaken because it was, was part of the PSM's recommendation was to switch the balls. But I thought well, that that had already happened voluntarily. No, there's well, no Well, uh, like I said, we, the, the, some of the ball brands that are on their list have been used at the court. I can't tell oh, you. Oh, on the PSM's yes. list. Okay. Yes. And I, I don't know right now what which balls are being used, uh, but yeah. I would think that there's been an effort in that area given the complaints that we've received do on we the Do we want to wait to do discussion until we open up for public comment? We or can. Are we, mm -hmm. are she we still, was just are finishing. still presenting? Yeah. Yeah, I, just, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to add those footnotes. Okay. <laughs> the, the last slide is, is just a summary of those five recommendations. Yeah, so if we, yeah, so the recommendations in brief, yeah. I have many questions, but I agree. I think I'll open up for some public comments and then perhaps some of my questions will get answered and we can hear from the public and um, then we can rediscuss. I have um, five speakers. Um, Mr. Bell Miley, you are up first. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. So my summary comment is this report appears to be biased towards permanent pickleball play at the City Hall Court. Here are my reasons. One, the unannounced measuring event events in March were unjustified and indicative of the ad hoc members' non-trust of the PSM report. They should be asked how this came about who was involved, what measuring equipment they used, and the results. And also, their comment about recording of sounds over a period of 10 seconds is what should be done. That's faulty. Impact sounds happen in 35 milliseconds. It can't be averaged. Two, use of the term intermittent to characterize the pickball play sound is good. It's in the PSM report. However, it does not describe the repetitive, high-frequency impact impulse sounds generated by multiple players on city hall courts. Up to 16 players at a time. Our citizens group estimated that during full play, there were over 1,700 paddle hits in one hour. Other appropriate descriptive terms are recurrent, rhythmic, cyclic, repetitive, continuous, and incessant. From the ad hoc report, they quote, I quote, another factor in annoyance is the interval of space between sounds. Intermittent sounds are considered more annoying than steady sounds. Three, here's a statement that is false. Most local players have, volunteer, have voluntarily complied with the paddle requirements by using the green list paddles. That's not true. This needs to be supported by data. Our citizens group members know it's not true because we've been there and checked. Complaints have been filed about this for. At the end of the ad hoc report, they summarized their activities. 
One statement says, we surveyed the pickleball community for current behavior, needs, and preferences. They left, they left out the folks who get impact. What's missing here is a similar survey of concerns, problems, and preferences of the nearby residents and property owners. Five, another key missing element is the sound mapping section from the PSM report on pages 17 to 20. You have a handout. These, chart, these charts clearly show the gradient levels of pickleball play sound as it spreads beyond civil to civic courts. Where's my, okay. The, the City Hall property, which is eight acres, is under extensive planning for a new park already is noise impacted. There's an atmospheric river of noise flowing to the southwest. In summary, this report needs revising. It refers to an amateur sound testing event unannounced as supportive evidence when the city paid $11,000 for one. They recommend returning to an expanded court and is currently impacting the neighbors. They failed to contract residents and owners for opinions. And lastly, they failed to consider the sound mapping details and its impact on the eight acre new city park. Thank you. Thank you. And next speaker, I have Linda Wilson. Hello and thank you. Um, I just want to say that I am for pickleball and again, um, I think that we need more hours to play and we need more courts to play. And playing out at Soul Park is a great idea, but I know that's not gonna happen overnight and that's gonna take um, quite a bit of time. So meanwhile, um, I'm still for playing over at um, Libby Park at the lower courts there. Um, Following is a player information observed in the morning on weekdays only. It is noted that Libby Park has eight tennis courts and the pickleball cart, um, courts utilize one tennis court. In January of this year, there was a total of 16 days. Um, at Libby Park, there was a total of 149 players, which equates to 1.1 player per day per court. At uh, the pickleball courts, there was 365 players, which equates to 22.8 players per day on one tennis court. Um, and in February, it was noted that for 17 days at Libby Park, there was a total of 197 players, which equates to 1.4 players per day per court. And the pickleball courts had 39, 397 players, which equates to 23.3 per day. And then in March, um, a total of 15 days at Libby Park, there was a total of 135 players, which equates to 1.1 um, per day. And the pickleball courts had 402 players, which equates to 26.8. So um, on, on the slide, it said that there would be no cost as far as opening the lower car courts to us. And so I just think that makes financial common sense um, to consider as utilizing those courts at Libby Park, the lower ones, um, for more pickleball playing. Thank you. Thank you. Could, could I just clarify? I, I was going to go ahead. Something uh, the the no cost that we refer to with the the Libby Park recommendation is the recommendation not to to do anything to the Libby Park, um, and in part because of there would be significant cost if we were to move pickleball there and continually switch courts between pickleball and tennis, so that those courts could be used for tennis events. Thank you for clarifying. I thought the same thing. Okay, thank you. Um, our next speaker, Bob McCall. Thank you very much. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the commission, staff. Um, first, I wanted to thank the ad hoc committee for the work that they've done on this. Uh, a uh, unfortunately very emotional topic uh, and uh, one that I think the ad hoc committee has tried to wade through as fairly as they can. I, I uh, 
I think looking at the recommendations, probably would be fair to say this report is probably relatively accurate right on the mark because it's uh, undoubtedly nobody, there is no, no side is going to be entirely pleased with the recommendation and no side is going to be totally disappointed. So it probably hit the mark pretty, uh, pretty closely. Uh, of course, as yeah, the previous uh, uh, speaker mentioned that she was pro pickleball, I guess I'm pro pickleball too, but I am really uh, more than that pro everybody being able to walk away from this and feeling that there was a fair process, uh, that their concerns were uh, addressed and that the outcome is one that works for everybody. And of course, I want the residents to feel uh, comfortable with that. And also I want my wife and I and our friends to be able to go play pickleball because it is just simple, simply a spectacular sport. Um, the disappointments, of course, Libby Park, the recommendations on Libby Park is a, is a disappointment. We've all been over there and see the very low usage of the, of the parks and it's, uh, of the courts and it seems like a, a logical place to go. Um, uh, it sounds like there was sound reasoning that went behind the recommendations of the ad hoc committee about why that isn't viable. It's still a disappointment. Uh, the recommendations for Seoul, that seems like a very viable option, a very viable long-term option and a very expensive option. As a person who has uh, built uh, probably 150 uh, tennis courts, uh, I know that uh, if you're, as has been promoted by others, if we're going to build world-class uh, world pickleball courts, it's not a matter of three or four inches of asphalt that goes on. It's a very expensive substructure to build the, uh, the courts. And so there's a lot of discussion with the county, um, being able to build the courts, how to fund the courts, and then how to make sure that the city of Ojai has access to those to capitalize what would be several hundred thousands of dollars of an investment. And so, so a lot of work to be done on that. A very viable option, though, that I believe this should be, uh, should be pursued. But that does leave for us several hundreds of people who play pickleball in growing numbers, only one current option, and that's the city hall courts. Uh, this is based on the recommendation uh, within the report itself. There is only one option left. Um, uh, we already, my wife and I, or, and I already uh, had consulted the green list. We bought paddles. They were $100 a piece on the green list, so no, no small investment. It's not going to break us, but on the other hand, it's not a small investment. Uh, if uh, the continued usage of those courts requires us to uh, go now to the blue list and buy new ones, you know, that's part of the compromise that we have to, uh, to do and would be willing to, uh, to do. So if that's the price that we need to pay, for us, it's very important to be able to continue having those courts out to, to be viable for the, uh, the community. So I just, and thank you for the, the work on, on this. Uh, I know the commission has taken it all very seriously. I know the city has taken it very seriously and appreciate all the work that they've gone into it. Thank you. And our next speaker is Leonard Cleave. Did I say that right, Lee Cleave? Yes, you did. Uh, good evening, Leonard Clayf. I live in the city of Ojai. Uh, I am a member of the Citizens for Sound Pickleball Policy. Um, I, overall, I was pleased with the presentation. Um, and I thank Mr. McFall for making the uh, most generous statement I've heard from a pickleball player in all the meetings that I've been at. Um, so maybe we are making some progress towards being able to figure this out in a in a way that works. A um, couple of points I wanted to make on the presentation. Um, one is that uh, it was stated that the city council unanimously approved the courts here. Um, uh, nobody advised the residents nearby that this was going to be happening. So yes, it was unanimous, but the people who were most directly affected were not notified. Um, so b bear that in mind, I guess. Um, uh, the key for me, the thing that stands out the most, um, is the dichotomy between please use good equipment and a requirement that you use good equipment. And when uh, Commissioner Firestone was speaking, I thought he was clear that at this point there are no requirements. And in the follow-up remarks from Commissioner Wilson, she constantly used the word requirements, requirements, requirements. 
I think that's misleading in terms of what's being presented, unless I missed something in the presentation. I don't think I did. Um, at the absolute minimum, there have to be requirements of sound mitigating paddles and sound mitigating balls. That's the only way that this is going to work for the residents, possibly work for the residents. Um, the other thing is, it was unclear to me from the report how this was going to be monitored, the voluntariness. Um, and, and again, there was a, 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 from Commissioner Firestone's presentation, a lack of any kind of clarity about well, if they, if, it doesn't, if they don't use the equipment, we'll have to limit hours, and if they do, we can expand hours. How is that going to be measured, and how is it going to be regulated, and how much are you going to eliminate it, and how much are you going to expand it? Um, that was missing. Um, and, you know, I mean, I don't expect a perfect report, and that's why we have public hearings so people can say what's missing. Um, but again, I thank you, and, and please make them, at the minimum, make it mandatory. Thank you. Thank you. And our last speaker, William Weirich. I was 16. Oh, I'm sorry. I have it. <laughs> you merged it together. Chair, My pile. Chair. I think that that um, is um, Luis's. He snuck that in on me. <laughs> sorry can't about be, that. That can't be my <laughs> oversight. Um, just wanted to go ahead and note, we do have several speakers um, via Zoom, and I do see one with the raised hand at this point. Okay. I'll ask if there's anybody else that would like to go ahead and speak. Please use Great. the raised hand feature. Thank and you. At this point, we'll go ahead and bring in uh, Mr. Mark Bodycomb to, to speak. Mark, can you confirm you can hear us, please? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to share. Uh, again, I thank the ad hoc committee and the um, Park and Rec Committee for their hard work. Um, I, I agree with the gentleman who spoke a couple of uh, people ago that I, I think that the outcome is a balanced one, uh, one that is not um, ideal for any of the parties associated. And I tend to agree that that's usually a good solution when, when nobody's perfectly happy. Um, my own personal uh, kind of thoughts as an avid uh, pickleball player is that I was interested to see that the, uh, that the discrepancy in the noise at the city Hall courts was just five decibels. Uh, honestly, uh, you know, when you look at all the numbers that were presented and what the gap is between what was recommended by PSM and what would need to be, um, you know, adhered to to kind of mitigate, um, I thought was really quite small. Um, and I was pleased to hear that, that it didn't seem like a big hurdle. Um, you know, again, I, I tend to agree that, uh, you know, having uh, a, a strong recommendation and encouraging uh, pickleball players to use uh, blue li blue list paddles, even though there is you know a lot of personal expense associated with that, and some will be able to do that. I think the idea of providing loaners, and I'm not sure six is going to be enough, but you know that's a step in the right direction. Um, I do uh, actually disagree. I think with the conclusion relative to Libby. I know Linda, you know, went over uh, specific data, but I want to just reiterate um, personal experience on pickleball courts in Austin, Texas, and other places that we've been, where they have had tennis courts that are dual striped, and so uh, they can be actively used for both sports and not needing to have expense associated with converting a court from you know tennis to pickleball and back and forth again so i would encourage uh the committee to really consider the fact that i have seen you know courts um that have successfully been co you know or, or striped for both court for both uh sports and successfully used by both tennis players and pickleball uh, players it, it seems like that option wasn't um, uh, perhaps pursued and I just want to reiterate that I think it's a really viable one um, so again I, I appreciate the what I think is uh, support for the um, you know ongoing use of the city courts we need to have 
you know, those courts um, continue to be available until a longer term solution, which, again, I think uh, I would hope that most people are seeing, you know, Seoul Park, uh, if it becomes a viable solution and we can work out something with the county and there's money to support that, um, I, I would certainly be in support of that. But that is a long term, uh, you know, issue that is going to take a long time to solve and come bring into reality. And, and, you know, the hundreds of us who play pickleball many times a week really need to have, you know, something that is viable and, and adequate uh, during the meantime. So um, thank you again to the ad hoc committee and to uh, the recreation committee for really taking this seriously and looking for, you know, meaningful solutions for all the parties. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we have one. Do we have one more online speaker? No, that's, oh, okay. that's all that's new. So if I could just clarify a couple of things, maybe. Um, right now, I believe the sign says that um, green list paddles are required. But as I said before, the only, the only way to enforce that is to take this list, lengthy list, and check every paddle. I do know that the list was circulated to the pickleball community. It was at the courts for a, a significant period of time when that requirement, because I do think it says required, uh, was put up. Um, so um, to say that uh, you know, uh, and most people did, uh, again, check their paddles. They were encouraged to check uh, that their paddles were on the list. Um, and, but that, that's the enforcement that has been in place. What we have recommended here is a system whereby it's easy to determine whether or not you have a number of people or, you know, some people using approved paddles. Uh, but we can't require people to register their paddles if they don't want to. We can't require people to buy new paddles if they don't want to. That's why uh, this is recommendation of the loaner paddles, because if you show up with a non-approved paddle, you can borrow a paddle. The same thing with the balls. Nobody uses their own balls. So if the city is supplying balls, those are the balls that are gonna be used. Um, and lastly, the, re the recommendation five is intended to be an incentive for the pickleball community, just as it was said, to, it, to voluntarily follow the, the recommendation to use the blue list paddles. If they do and the sound level is within the guidelines, then we're recommending expand the hours, and that is the reward for um, coming into compliance, having, using these paddles. Um, if, if it doesn't happen, then the city, city council can decide whatever to do with the, the, the hours. But there's, no, there's, not been an, there's not been enforcement, there's not been an incentive with the required green list paddles. The gr difference between the green list and the blue list, again, is that the blue list is uh, kind of updated regularly, so there's new manufacturers coming out, I, I assume, all the time, different, and, and, and with each um, version, it's, uh, in theory, uh, they're addressing the sound issue, is e what I understand. Exactly, and say, that's correct? exactly okay. what the list is, okay. is about. And, and the other part of it is that the PSM, uh, uh, consultants are actually testing the paddles. They have a methodology that they're very proud <laughs> to actually share so that there's a way to know how are they testing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do the testing um, and, uh, and then based on their testing, they put paddles on the list or, th or they don't they put them, them on the list, yeah. There was some mention in your discussion earlier, your presentation earlier, and you referenced the place in Arizona that is a gated, is it a gated community That's where of the, sorts? Green, the, okay. green the green list comes, list comes from. from. Yeah. And so one thing that we haven't really t discussed, um, at least at length, is having some type of staff monitor to, to get this, you know, 
it's, it's certainly not an infant stage program. It's been going on for some time. So if there's still the struggle about what paddles um, are um, required, requested, uh, preferred, whatever word you want to put on it, um, if there isn't an enforcement of that and it's a detriment to the actual program that we're all working so tirelessly, I, I feel like instead of just having you know a, an observation for an hour here an hour there that maybe that's something that we need to consider um, from now through say january you know of next year when we're going to be discussing these guidelines that we allocate some staff time um, some unbiased staff time to do enforcement of what we're requiring even if it is the green list that we have out there i mean that that seems reasonable that we have I know we probably don't have a person in place, but I'm sure that. That's correct. Yeah, we wouldn't have. It's a just person something we haven't place. talked um, about. And then that's something that, if the commission wanted to to share that recommendation mm -hmm. with city council for consideration, something the commission could definitely. Because you haven't so. had any, you haven't assigned a staff to or a volunteer not, no. from the, you know, from the city, not a not a pickleball person correct. or a tennis person, but like a city um, intern of sorts. We talked about bringing that program back. And we know when the play is, so it's something that even if it wasn't a paid position, it could be something to consider. Yeah, and enforcement. That's uh, interesting. We did, you know, in thinking about the, the this sticker system mm -hmm. that we recommend, um, it would make it very easy to do a quick check of kind of levels of compliance, yeah. right? You just look at everyone's bottom of their paddle. It has a sticker. It doesn't. If it doesn't, you can you know it, you can check the paddle against this this blue list and then give them a sticker um, if it. Oh, I have a question too. Qualifies. You can give information if it doesn't right. qualify for visitors that mm -hmm. aren't familiar. And there's loaner paddles, so nobody needs to use a paddle that's not uh, on the blue list. Well, it seems it, counterproductive given where we've started and where we're at now for any of the pickleball players that are familiar with what our um, objectives are to not be doing everything they can to mitigate the sound issue because it is really the you know the thorn in everyone's side right, right now is dealing with addressing you know a common ground for and everyone. part of uh, our recommendation structure was um, to provide a feedback mechanism so I think the situation we're in currently we're hearing from some people that pickleball is too loud and then we hear from other people that it's not, right? Uh, and so here we have a feedback mechanism for the community to say, uh, enforce this with our support. You can measure it very easily. We've, we've spelled out how to measure the sound level and see for yourself if you're being uh, too loud relative to the, the guidelines or not and go from there. And that's, that's kind of the enforcement mechanism is, is if the, the guidelines that we've offered are acceptable, it, it, they can be they can be uh, tested anytime, and um, you know uh, to see if they're in compliance. And that's what we're recommending: periodic tests over a period of time. If they're meeting the recommendations, the guidelines, that means people are in compliance. If they're not meeting the guidelines, that means people are not in compliance. Can I ask a, a couple of questions? Clarification. Right now we have paddles that are loners, but not from the city themselves. Right. Pickleball. So all the club has been doing all of the loners, and that's what we're hoping will go forward, correct? No. Just, no, I think we recommended no. that the city purchase. I think one the city of the recommendations. purchase them, but I'm not Wait. sure who's loaning them. Well, well, it would still right now, in, unless there's some other way, uh, it would still be the club. Good. Okay. You know, I just wanted to make sure that kind of like an offset of yeah. cost. Well, I think that what we're saying is the city will buy these and provide them to right. be used as loaners. Mm -hmm. and that's, yeah. that's how through I'm understanding the club. it, through the club. Right, because right. the yeah. club, the club man, ma maintains the locker there. Mm -hmm. so, no, right. It makes sense. I just wanted to yeah. clarify, make sure that's, that's, that yeah. I had it correct. Mm -hmm. And then the balls will be provided by the city, those picked by the city that are the highest level of sound mitigation that we can provide. Well, but there's, think, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, there's just a couple other considerations, especially in this winter time. Uh, some balls crack very quickly. And you go through balls very quickly. So, okay. I mean, the lowest. So what makes a ball uh, uh, quieter is the softness. So, you okay, know. Okay, so I, how about I restate that whatever is considered to be the most viable option for yeah. the season yeah. and conditions yeah. and sound mitigation. 
Okay, so and, those would be and provided a by the city. A certain number of is provided by the city that that's undetermined, right? right? That's it's, right. Well, we got some estimates. We and uh, often we go through balls faster in the winter because they crack. Mm -hmm. But we've got some estimates from the pickleball club. So again, we put in a kind of generous uh, estimate of right. what the yearly cost might be. And so current, currently, the, like the pickleball club is buying all of the pickleball, so right. we know pretty well what how many costs. balls they use yeah. and what so the cost and would be. We would the city would take over providing those balls. Well, but they would also be held into the locker because then they're brought out and used that right. way. And and, and uh, again, somebody walks up with their own balls. We say it's just general practice. Please uh, use our balls. That way, people don't yeah. have to, you know. So the, the process is already set up for all. Yeah, the this. process it's is already, already happening. Set. It's just a matter of adding some more equipment, maybe mm -hmm. changing out some options. Right. Okay. My other question is: Is there a reason we wouldn't have enough that we could loan it to every player? Should we need to? On well, a on four courts with doubles. It's, if you want to buy 16 paddles, you, that's, you know, just up the budget. I just think in that <laughs> sense, there's no, if you have all of the equipment you need, mm -hmm. and it makes it very clear that it's an option for everyone to use it. That's, that's just, it's a, it's a minor thing. Right. I think that there's different levels of paddles, though. Some are more competitive than others. And I mean, it's got to be similar to. Yeah, I think it's just, kind of control versus speed. Um, so there is clearly preference. Different people, different players prefer different paddles. And so. You know, I think uh, there are different ways to go about it. We, one would be to just say you can only use the city's paddles, and we have a set of you know maybe a few different flavors. Oh, of I wasn't going paddle. that far. I just think it's nice to know that we would have enough in the conditions. Right. That we would need. Well, and we yeah. yeah we and we discussed that. I mean, I think even Luis brought that up. We you know if if that's if if that feels like something that the uh, commission wants to recommend or the city wants to take on, you know, again the range. The realistic range would be between two hundred and four hundred dollars a paddle. So, I, I, but I, and I'm not I'm not trying to go there. That's really yeah. no, that's but it really gives you a sense of cost, right? Even yes. if you bought sixteen or twenty paddles, we're okay. talking about to, to compare to a thousand dollars. Yes. I mean, I would not, you know, tell one soccer player he has to have the same exact pair of shoes as every other soccer player. Right. Right. I understand that there's <laughs> definitely a difference in preference yeah. and play and all of that. But I I think for me the combination of things that would work is the stickering for people who have paddles that are compliant. On and the list. On the list. And I honestly think that could also possibly done, be done by the club, too, at the same time. Yes. So, that, so that it's all being to, at the same location, right. all maintained in that system. That, that makes good sense to have the stickers to make it uh, you know, mm -hmm. clear if it's a compliant paddle. And then have paddles, knowing that for many people who come to play that, I would say probably most probably are going to have their own paddles unless they're new, correct? Right. right. And, and yeah, and a um, couple of things. One, the... Frequent players frequently get the newer paddles, so that's why, you know, most a lot of them are going to have paddles already on that list. Um, two, when new players show up and they uh, show up with wooden paddles, for example, <laughs> the, many times if they show up more than once, usually somebody offers them a different paddle, and that is one, it's better, but two, it's quieter. Mm -hmm. So. And they're learning, so and they're they learning. Have to, so they don't and have that's to the, that's have the, that expensive until they know what maybe right. works that, for them. That's is, the motivation of the club to have the loaner pedals. Is mm -hmm. you can show up without a paddle and you can still play. Still learn. Is the blue list uh, prioritize? Uh, um, um, I haven't seen it. Is it say like you know this is the the most e efficient, quietest paddle on the market? Does it categorize, um, or it's just like pass or fail, or how's it, it categorized? It uh, they don't. Uh, they don't have a numerical qualification like that, although I think on the current list it does point out that one of the paddles on there is is the quietest that's uh, uh, available, but it's not tournament approved. Uh, so they're, if they're on the list, they're already compliant with sound mitigation, being a quieter paddle. If that's they're on the blue the list, yeah. list. But is there right. certain level, like, does it say so, this quiet is the most yes. quiet paddle? I'm well, sure so their that. range, their range says that quieter paddles can bring down the, P PSM says quieter paddles can bring, uh, can make a seven to 10 decibel difference. Wow. Right. And so, I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know that they publish their testing results I, as far as like, you know, because then you could rank them from quietest right, right, right. To, to loudest. Um, of course, also how their test translates to like an actual person hitting the ball is another piece of this that, you know, you'd have to figure out. Um, so, yeah, it's unclear if, if that information would be available. 
I did also um, have a question about, well, so given that what you just said that w some of the paddles can can gain you 10 points or 10 decibels, mm -hmm. um, the, the using even the um, worst case scenario, we're only you know a few decibels off from where we need to be. It seems like with balls and paddles and effort um, on everyone's part, it seems like that goal for those courts would be met even at the worst case scenario level. I mean, right? Using the that was our thinking, and that that's what drove our recommendation. I, I will say though, if I mean, if it turns out that most people are already using paddles that are like blue list or, or near blue list, we might not see that. 10 decibel you know, reduction because people are already using quieter paddles. That's the part we don't know is, is right. kind of really how much quieter would it be if everyone moved to blue list versus what the current but, mix of paddles. But the I'd be balls kind of curious to know what paddle was used for the 63. I know he spoke to us a, a while back. Oh, he, the heart, the, mm -hmm. he used an older paddle. Uh, it was a, a major brand. Uh, it's escaping me what, what it is right now, but it, it was an older paddle, so probably two years or more. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't have the newer uh, materials, mm -hmm. and um, and then he requested a hard hitter uh, in, mm -hmm. in in every location, and um, and uh, just recorded that that hard hitter. Mm -hmm. So again, creating that worst case. But I think even with the worst case scenario numbers, if we focus on m ensuring that it's the latest greatest type on the list. Yeah. Um, and that the club is um, using the quieter balls and cities offsetting that cost at least to get um, that program started. I love the sticker idea. I think that's great. That makes it easier for the club. Um, I think that that is a, a really great move in the right direction. I, I don't know that I necessarily um, agree with, um, you know, I don't know enough about the equipment that was used for for the um, impromptu test that we did. Um, I think using the worst case scenario is based on our professionals. I think we should focus on that, and I don't think that we should dismiss that your figures were different. I mean, I think we need to also use a little bit of common sense that it doesn't seem completely fair to, to, to say, you know, use the heavy hitter, use the old paddle, and this is what we're going to get, and that's the baseline. But I think we do also have to respect the the professional and what he did, you know, and use that as a baseline. I think we can still achieve um, what where we need to be using those higher figures. And then if that isn't a heavy hitter, it's only going to be quieter. And I don't think we'll have any objections to it being even lower. Right. right. And yeah, I think something important to point out is that our recommendations um, don't take any of the, the, the measured numbers as like kind of absolute numbers that we're working against. It's, it's more a, this is how you measure sound. Uh, and these are what levels of sound are considered a nuisance versus um, not. So um, yeah, we get a good picture from PSM of what that, that looks like. Part of that, uh, which we haven't talked about yet, is the background sound level. And you'll notice that the background sound at City Hall, City Hall Courts, uh, was much higher than Libby Park or Seoul Park, uh, I think due mostly to the traffic. On, which then on makes Terrace that Street. number higher, correct? So if the higher the background noise, the higher the um, average sound at the, 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 the guideline. The, MF, the LF, right. LAF max is yeah. higher. So um, in our recommendation, we haven't, we don't say use 55 decibels as the background sound. We say this is how you measure background sound. And that's some of the feedback we got in comments that were submitted to us by email prior to this was that, you know, that, that 50, there's some disagreement about what that 55 represents. Was that while a car was passing? What about the times when a car is not passing? There's a lot of variability because sometimes there's traffic and sometimes there's not. And we've addressed that in our recommendation. We say that you might have to like take an average over up to four hours if there's a lot of variation. So you're getting a true average. I'm guessing in the, um, you know, the morning, just when it's in, in general, a little bit quieter, that never is going to be lower. I mean, just it would make sense that that that's the case. But I don't I mean, I'm just assuming. actually yeah. so from our experience there, there's plenty of traffic in the morning and there's also a lot of birds in the morning, oh, which are surprisingly true. loud. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how that would play out, you know, different times of the day. But that's I think like having in the way we structured the recommendations, 
like you would have to look into that mm-hmm. to understand how that background noise varies. But either way, so you're saying it could be lower at some point? It could be below so 55? Possibly, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. And, um, and it could be higher sometimes. Right, so, right. But so that's why we didn't, we're not, we're not recommending absolute numbers, say, and we're not dismissing the uh, PSM's testing. And just to clarify, I, our, our uh, testing was to test the methodology that we were recommending because uh, I don't think the city wants to hire an acoustical engineer to come out and, and test sound every time there needs to be a sound test. Mm-hmm. So we were, uh, we were testing the methodology and all three of us were there. <laughs> we did it cooperatively. And yours is not new. We do this, um, I yeah. mean, we have, yeah. the, obviously we didn't and purchase we, this we, equipment, right? right. You we use just it on use, a regular basis? Correct, yeah. yes. And we don't. use the equipment that the city has, mm-hmm. although we've also suggested that maybe the city wants to get a little more sophisticated sound meter. But again, it was a sort of testing. Uh, if our understanding and our logic uh, worked mm-hmm. and Right. Since we were relatively close to the PSM numbers, um, we felt like, okay, we, we got it. We have a good understanding here, and we're not so far from, from their numbers, so this should work. And you can attribute that to um, many things, right? Equipment, right. the time of day, the paddles, the balls, the player. Right. All of those things affected your numbers and, and possibly then also PSM numbers in the same e- exactly, respect, right? Exactly, we, because we were earlier in the morning, Mm-hmm. Uh, for our morning test than PSM was. They came more in the early afternoon. Mm-hmm. So, you know, different, yeah. I think also, yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, Dr. Walker, who submitted uh, sound testing to us as well, if, if you look at the, uh, the fast setting graphics that, that he provided, it's consistent with what we found. And that's consistent with what PSM found, you know, given what we know the difference was between their kind of uh, methodology and, and what we were looking at. And after reading your methodology and reading about the getting new meters, it sounds like the real benefit of doing that is simplifying the process. Is, is, because the newer, because yeah, the new ensure yes. that it, well, because the newer meters mm-hmm. basically allow them to not have to count certain things; it counts right, for you. Right. It's, right. It's right. A much, and, it, and it's you can measure the process exactly the, based on your methodology also the, the new equipment. Right. The current um, city sound meter, you can't measure background sound in the way that we've prescribed with it. Right. It won't take an average over. You would have to period of time. Kind of watch it and yeah. Yeah. So I I, I think and it's a thousand dollars estimated for an average meter for that kind of level of sound meter that does that. I'm sure it's not at the same level as PSM's, but it's right, higher. right. And the intent of PSM's recommendation and putting it in um, is this LAF the the fast setting as opposed to the impulse setting, which is something we've heard from the public a lot about is that that is something that's easy to measure is the fast setting and that and the consistent. the signature of the pickleball sound you'll get a consistent mapping from that fast setting to an impulse setting so certainly it's the pickleball noise is better characterized as an impulse noise and there are more expensive meters that can measure that really rapid mm-hmm. sound um, and less expensive you know more commonly used meters that can measure it at a less rapid frequency and that's what we have but they they map to each other so we could have set our recommendation as like a higher number but with using the impulse setting I was as opposed say, to did PSM setting. do any impulse I don't remember them using that word in there so they just did the fast setting I think so I the think the that's setting. their methodology yeah, and then yeah. yeah the intent is to have like an accessible test right. okay. that's still kind of capturing nuisance level how old is our meter that we have? I think the thing is not the age. I think that it doesn't do, it doesn't have certain functions on it yeah. that would make this a straightforward okay. testing that anyone could do with consistency without having to. It's, the way I read it was is there's a part of it when you do it, you have to actually count the peaks yourself and write them down as you, oh, as you right. see them. This, like this, a- this averages it out over a period of time to give you that information without manually having to not miss something. So it, it, it automates it like a, yeah. an easy tool for, right. uh, for the cost to yeah. have right. yeah. to ensure a consistent a, assessment. Mm-hmm. I, I um, really 
think the report was thorough. I know, we, we didn't start off by thanking you. Yes. So <laughs> we thank just you. jumped right in. Yes. I mean, it was a lot of work and a lot of time. And um, Commissioner Inter and I did sit on the previous one, and um, wow, because this it was not this uh, at all. <laughs> so, um, and, and I really appreciate very impressive. breaking it down, because I read, I read through your report, I understood, and I understood what it called back to in PSMs, and it was very clear where you were taking the information from, and I thought it was very helpful. So those who are out there, if they're interested and want more information, they, they should take a look at your report, because I think it helps really lay out um, all the issues and the mm -hmm. ways to approach it. And I totally agree with the, it's an assessment, not a rule, and not a set of rules. We're trying to take, I, I do think that we, probably at some point should come up with, if we're having it on, you know, if we have a certain time period within which we're going to try and make this progress, the only way you know you make progress is if you assess it. Right. <laughs> so, right. I, you know, it's not enforcement per se, but I think maybe we should have a, you know, not totally regular schedule, but, you know, spot checks on it mm -hmm. so that we could, you know, know if we're making progress. Right. Well, we didn't we didn't want to get into too many minutes yes, details. detail, yeah. but to, but to suggest uh, what we thought would be a workable program and give some uh, guidelines for how it could be assessed. And there's at least two ways here, right? There's the sound measurements, but there's also just uh, spot checking the paddles. Equipment. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So between what our what our goal is based on on the slide here is we need to bring it down eight um, decibels. From this chart here, but I think it's five, isn't it? Mm -mm. Sixty-three to fifty-five, to right? Oh no, I'm sorry, you're right. Fifty-eight to, right. to sixty-three. Yeah. So five. Yeah. Yeah. And based on our conversations, uh, your conversations with PSM, they are confident. Um, they feel relatively confident in their past experience that using the quieter balls and the paddles can achieve that, along with a, a higher sound barrier. I read that the paddles should be about three, and the um, between the balls and the paddles, right? So I think the breakdown is the paddles can be like up to seven, I think it was, mm -hmm. but again, that yeah. depends on how bad the current paddles are, right, which right. we don't know right. precisely. But we balls, do know though, we do know on that 63 that it was a relatively old paddle, yeah. which does tell, I mean, that's a huge <coughs> impact right there, just replacing that paddle if we were to you know, theoretically redo the test with the latest and greatest paddle with a heavy hitter and a quieter ball, that number 63 is likely to, to be much lower, right? Right. right. And right. I, I think I'm not our, sure why our, we didn't catch that of not use a, a different paddle. I don't know what, that's a kind of an oversight, I guess. I mean, I, I think that's, that's intentional on, that. on, on their part and the mm -hmm. way they like to do the testing is mm -hmm. they want to look at the worst case. They want to kind of see that upper bound of, what you're going to experience. Really real. I mean, it is worst case, but worst case could also mean worst case with the latest and great can still have a heavy. Right. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> their means. feeling also is that, um, you know, in a public court, uh, enforcing paddles is not an option. <laughs> Yeah. And so that's kind of the flavor of, of their recommendations. Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah. And also, I, think, yeah. I mean, when we when we did our testing of the methodology, uh, we were um, uh, in the afternoon session, particularly heavy hitters, mm -hmm. and using the paddles that they use right now, and there was a slight uh, difference in this. You know, it was slightly lower. So I, I mean, I think some of it, the difference between what the heavy hitter single heavy hitter on an old paddle and what we were looking at could be could give us some indication that there are quieter paddles being used mm -hmm. but i mean so what we're kind of um, theorizing will happen is that ensuring that more people are using quieter paddles and adding quieter balls consistently quieter balls could bring it down five decibels could bring it down more, but I think five is kind of where we think it it's likely to fall, and that would put it in again right. to the guidelines. Uh, the even worst case, so it could even be lower. You, you, you excerpted a chart from the PSM recommended sound mitigation estimates and measures, and what they used was five decibels. Did you say five decibels? Right. right. So that's where they get it's the ten. ten. It could possibly mm -hmm. bring it down uh, yeah. by as much as ten. Uh, but that's also their their experience. I think part of that is their experience in other places. People don't use quieter paddles. <laughs> they don't. They don't. No, 
they don't have a green list requirement. So they, they you know, uh, they go in with the hardest hitter and they even explain to us sometimes they can't get hard hitters. <laughs> so it kind of messes up their methodology. Now, um, you, you mentioned something about that being a public park and not being able to enforce those types. Of, um, we can we can certainly recommend that the city council make that part of an ordinance so that it is enforceable. I mean, right? We can. Could, it, could we start with we have we have a, a, an organization that's doing a lot of work to. I mean, I'm just saying that it is it is in theory enforceable, sure, right? right. And I think, I, but I agree. We, we have start a, well, I, I, absolutely start with, yeah. with uh, providing the you know the paddles mm -hmm. and the balls, and see where we're how you know, and then maybe spot check that occasionally on the right. compliance or where we are, and then come back and take a look at that later. Well, we yeah, I, I think that there's definitely been a huge, um, you know, desire to do what they need to do to make yep. all the complaints go away. I mean, nobody wants to have to deal with, you know, the the opposing. Um, views of, of um, you know, non-pickleball versus pickleball. So I think that uh, my sense is that they've, they've done what we've asked them to do and then some. So. Well, and I think, yeah, and I think. But I don't understand why it's not, why it's not, um, where there's this gray area of if they're using the, the green paddles or, or not. Well, I, I mean, think the green paddle list is new to, to start with. Mm. It's, or the blue paddle, sorry. The, the blue, blue list is the new. Blue the list green is paddle new. list is older. Right, right. So we're moving from the green list to the blue list. Okay. Right. And the, the blue paddle list is more restrictive. I mean, the green paddle list is updated regularly. So it's, it's very long. Karen showed the right. printout of it. it it's because they just keep adding like yeah, these yeah. paddles to yeah. it. Um, but the, the blue list is more restrictive. It's just kind of, it's indicating what are the, the best performing paddles. Right, and it, it's mainly more restrictive because it is looking at the newer paddles. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know, my sense is that, especially the very serious players, they move on to the m newer paddles. They're not buying them for the sound. I mean, yeah, let's, I, you know, let's be clear. Nobody, no pickleball player is buying, oh, I'm going to go get the quietest paddle I can. They're going to get the paddle that fits their style of play. But, but, but having, you know, um, enforcement just gets to be really tricky in any public setting uh, for lots of different reasons. Uh, peer persuasion, uh, I think, at least in my experience, it works better. Um, and again, we've tried to incentivize that with our fifth recommendation. Right. Use these paddles, use these balls, and when there's spot checks, that information is reported. Is, is given to the community. You're doing it this month. You're not doing it this month, <laughs> you know, or whatever. And because, uh, I mean, already there's a lot of, um, I mean, I think if you spent time at the courts, you would see there is a lot of already just peer um, uh, pressure to f follow the customs <coughs> of the court. Peer management. Peer management. Yeah. yeah, that's the word I want to use. Peer management to follow the customs of the court. Mm -hmm. So... so Ultimately, out of tonight's discussion, we're looking for a recommendation for council. I have one more speaker I need to fit oh, in. Okay. okay. Skippy. Has... <laughs> Sorry, before we no. get too far. I just want to say thank you for all the work you've done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I play here. I love it. I came here every morning. I clean the courts. I clean the bird poop and I play. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That's kind of like my new job. <laughs> you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and yes, I think that that's where we're at. We've got this um, report ahead of us with five recommendations, and I didn't see that there was one. We could have a combination of the, um, you know, recommend portions of one and not the other, but that's what we're ultimately asking of the full commission is to um, digest this report and as a full commission come up with a recommendation to give to a staff to give to the city council. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we've discussed in depth, and I feel like we, we're all kind of in the same place. Um, blue list, a certification process for paddles done by the club. Sticker, sticker, sticker program. Sticker program. Mm -hmm. um, balls and paddles. Provided by provided the city. Provided by the city to be used. Um, and that we will start with having the club implement all of that. And then we'll check well, we, in. we want to ask the city we staff to help us implement that. Do, we'll help. Uh, no, I mean, I, with the, it'll be a. I think it's, be a, it's city balls will are different than the paddles because it's going to be the city 
balls are going to kind of replace the club's existing supply. Is that just so that we can ensure that they're, because it sounds like the club so, is buying them now. Yeah, so the club is, is purchasing them now. So um, the recommendation, commissioners, please correct me if I'm wrong, it would be a shared cost. So the burden okay. wouldn't solely fall on the city. It would okay. be a shared cost. The city would provide up to a certain amount, whatever okay. is recommended, okay. and then the club would go ahead and do and, uh, and, the remaining. And we could see what the club's using right now. Okay. Cause like, mm -hmm. I, I have, I don't know if they're on the list so or not. The club and the and and and, and staff will work mm -hmm. out how to implement this program. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the program's goal will be to have people using blue list paddles mm -hmm. and sound mitigating balls, mm -hmm. and have loaners for those who can't comply at any given moment, or, so they can or continue to play. <clears throat> maybe they um, are new to the sport, right? And they, or they are um, going to purchase one and they need to try it. Try it out. That's, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. And we can leave open the number of paddles that we suggest to buy, or it doesn't have to be hard and fast at six. We could do more if we felt that would well, be helpful. Well, yeah, we, we didn't put in a number Maybe of paddles. Like we as, just put a, a um, rate, agreed upon a, a between staff and, um, and the association, you know, with, yeah. to fit the needs of the current play. Yeah. And the fact that we're moving from a green list to a blue list. Yeah. <laughs> Rather <laughs> for, quickly. Quickly, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so and that part we're, we're, I think we're pretty solid on. And I think we need to talk about um, the different locations. Yep. There seems to, but also I think we're in, based on the recommendation of the ad hoc. I think um, definitely pursuing Seoul Park seems to be the really um, costly solution, time-consuming solution. But we have had we um, really started pursuing that solution in an, in a, a more accelerated. Um, rate when we when we first had the ad hoc right we didn't have that collaboration with the county we have new people there they're certainly motivated to work with us and and the city um we could have we could have had courts i really i really think that would have been um i mean i know covid got in the way and different things happen but having that at least get the ball rolling get our agreements in place um we definitely need to have a tree planting program um, as part of the um, pickleball <laughs> design. Has, have you guys been to Seoul Park lately? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that the commission supporting that and whatever we can do to, to be a part of the communications with the county to put this at the priority um, as far as designing um, and that whole concept and making sure that it's designed large enough so that it can accommodate um, growth. Are we on 6B now? No, we're still on 6A. <laughs> still on 6A. That might sound like it. You can, t yeah. if you want to chime in on that, this has to do with the recommendation for... Um, do, you, do you want to go recommendation by recommendation? That's no? that's and then, good. yeah, you want to do it that? Yeah. You want to start with number one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, right, because I, I think my recommendation would be that we approve this whole, all these recommendations. We don't try as to one paraphrase block. them yes, as oh. one, right? yeah. So yeah, if there's any details in here that we want to change, then we should talk about that. Okay. I think that recommendation one is very good. The assessment guidelines and the protocols you've put forward and your um, the complete report are very good. I, understandable, even to those of us who are not um, as well versed in sound. Join a pickleball ad hoc committee and you'll get well versed in sound. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, um, rec I would like to recommend that we purchase. Purchase the meter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we could change that in our language. Uh, well, I think number two. Um, we, that's what we were just talking about. Do we want to talk a little bit more about OUSD um, in here and how, you know, currently Matilla has um, scheduled to close in, in June and... Well, they're having a meeting tonight, so... We I know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, provided things don't change, that does seem like, uh, I mean, the, the space is going to be sitting there. I don't know what the... Right. I, so, I, I think uh, it's on there, though. Yeah. Luis has reached out to the school district repeatedly. Um, I don't know if you want to... Yeah, what sorry, about up, up at the behind the skate park too? Did, was that a discussion at all, or is it too close to the houses on the mm. back side? <laughs> We, we did not have that discussion behind the, the skate park, um, but I did reach out to the school district uh, for various other facilities. Um, they did share with everything that's going on. Um, they are not going to be renting out any of their facilities um, after the school season okay. um, until 
uh, that whole situation is is addressed. Yeah. So because in theory there are there is a huge tennis court at San Antonio mm -hmm. that um, is actually not that bad. Of con I mean the kids were still playing on. I think they resurfaced it not that long ago. And so that I mean, in yeah. it, that is there's plenty of parking. It's there's no houses around there, and and converting that into a pickleball court, um, perhaps during the interim of what they're going to do with the the um, school facilities, and um, if we can you know um, talk about Soul Park and how long that's going to take, that is also another temporary option that could be done relatively inexpensive. Right. Well, that's that's why we we wanted to make sure that that's part of the recommendation that there might be some interim options. But given the situation with the school district right now, and we have discussed, we've talked about San Antonio, we've talked about Matilla, we've talked about that there's maybe some other options there. But until um, until things get resolved with the school district, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to we wanted to put it in so it's not forgotten. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I think that at the short term it might very well work, yeah. especially at. Yeah. I don't remember what the conditions are at Matilha, but I know the courts at San Antonio are in pretty good condition. Yeah, well, the closed. Con courts at Matilha were in bad condition. They were scheduled to get re re improved last summer, but I don't know if that happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, I guess just in our, at least in my mind, given what we don't know for sure it's going with the school district, maybe in a year there might be something that is available at the school, which is certainly a shorter time frame than soul park is likely to be so the only difference the only other problem that we run into though is using it during our the hours that people want to play are also when school is in session and and, and so unless the school is actually closed like san right. antonio then right. it would be ideal for morning play or exactly. evening play or whatever exactly so, again we don't know yeah we, we don't, don't know. know so if we wait wait and see what <laughs> but something to stay on top of for sure yeah. that sounds yeah. really viable yeah. so, so, so any other changes two? on two i would I, I would the only change i would make is to develop and adopt to you know, oh, to okay. point out that we're oh, gonna, it's to going to take some time adopt. to develop okay. a plan, and then we'll adopt it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Recommendation number three. I agree with number three. <laughs> so. I think that, yeah, that, that while that doesn't please everyone, I think that it um, the noise issue isn't practical, um, and definitely we've talked in great detail about. Um, I, I don't um, remember exactly, but I made some notes here about the dual court that um, our um, speaker online was so, talking about, and I yeah. think that there was some conflict with s the tournament play, exactly. right? That they, that just so, yeah, disqualifies so, the court of some sort. So in most other places where they do have dual use, mm -hmm. they do not have a internationally known tournament. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that happens every year. Mm -hmm. So um, and unless and until the tournament play mm -hmm. changes, um, you know, it, it's just not practical. Because uh, I think the figures, I think we have in the, in the report, it could cost as much as $45,000 a year to go yeah. back and forth. Plus it would take a court out of commission for two to four weeks every time. And right now there's at least three times a year that would happen. So there's a, you know, logistically, it, it wouldn't it would it wouldn't gain more pickleball. And it's it's expensive, it's time consuming, it, place, and then yeah. it interrupts other programs. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we agree uh, number three, so not moving on to number four. Um, you I'm gonna give oh, you I'm sorry. I'm going to give you the more detailed one because this is yeah. in the a full report of the detailed. It's paraphrased in the presentation. It's paraphrased in the presentation. Oh, got so it. this will okay. help. This is the full report. Yeah. Okay. The um, only other notes I made on here was encourage. I think that we do need to make that um, a requirement if that's. Um, would you say encourage? Um, so actually, we, we don't work with pickleball community yeah. to reduce pickleball sound levels through the following activities. Right. So mm -hmm. we don't actually we uh, establish a no fee paddle certification program and encourage the use of certified acceptable paddles through the following by adopting uh, the list and providing the materials. Yeah, and then I think the this is the work um, work with pickleball community to do periodic checks of paddles and the use of the courts 
in use on the courts to estimate the percentage that are certified. And, and then rely on peer um, management to really, I mean, it, that, that dictates the success or failure of the program come, come January when we rediscuss. Right. I mean, really, it's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then these numbers that are used, the key numbers on the bottom, I just want to make sure those are from the, um, the, the 63, that's from the, I'm just for stating this for the record, um, those are the worst case scenarios. Um, we know that that was an older paddle. We know that that was done by the professional. We've included the measure here for typical play um, based on the equipment that we have. But our goal is to use the 63 number and bring it down below the 55 based on the numbers that we know from PSM as far as paddle and ball mitigation sound. Because we can get up to 10. So that's that's what we know now. We want to get below 58. So three that's decibels about the background. Yeah. Uh, in the course of regular testing, we may find a different background sound level, uh, but we have the recipe for, for how what that means as far as the that. guideline. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have any other uh, comments other than to, to ensure that we... Um, really something in there about peer mitigation or peer management. Well, it starts off with the city should work with pickleball community to reduce sound levels in the near term and for the long term. Okay. Do you want to add, do you want more language or is that, that yeah, covers I'm it? I'm fine okay. with that. Okay. And then number five. I read all this. Okay. You're good. I like this. This is okay. I'm, for me. Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, let's see. Um, who's going to do the, the monitoring in six months? Could we, should we maybe um, put in here that um, in, encourage, a little bit more encouragement to get the equipment, secure the equipment um, before we start monitoring i mean that seems really um if we don't have that new equipment it sounds really time consuming and and not, not entirely not possible because yeah. we can't do the background so uh, should we add uh, something to to hear that um that we need to um combine it with the purchasing of the newer equipment i think we add that to item one mm -hmm. And add that in, uh, into that guideline for so recommendation number one. For, for, uh, the, purchase. The, the purchase. Sound, purchase yeah. the yeah, meter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, I have a note of adding that to Move recommend okay. the purchase of the better meter. Because I think right now it, it just says may have to. Right. But we can right. add that in yeah. and, and put the cost. And in. then for five, I think it sounds like you want specificity about uh, who would do the measurement and, and when. Oh, between now and, and the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, just so that they're, because I feel like they're going to have the same questions. Right, and right? it came so, up in the mm -hmm. public comments mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so, um, so who would that be? So, I mean, I think it would be city <laughs> staff. I don't city think staff, it would be us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. City staff doing the measurement. Um, with updated equipment. With updated equipment, okay. And Which you'll use to for other things. I mean, if you have it for this purpose, you'll be able to use it for in parties that you, I don't know, what do you Correct. use it for? So what are some of the uh, things that you do with that? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. That's our code, enfor code enforcement officer who primarily utilizes it to oh. measure any complaints or anything of that nature. Oh, got it. Okay. So it'll be shared between departments. Mm -hmm. Recreation will have to bear the entire cost? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's a, that's a practice that we do now. Okay. Uh, it's a shared equipment. So the, the uh, under 5A. Maybe he could keep the old one and we can keep the new one. <laughs> 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 and not share it. Um, under 5A, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe we should just add some language um, with uh, spot checks throughout that six month, I mean, or, you know, assessments. What page is that? 26? Yeah. That seems like the place to add, if, you know, when you'd want it done. Right. I mean, in that paragraph, something to the effect that uh, regular, you know, regular assessments over the next six months and to be determined by staff. I kind of like that. I, I mean, I know there was some objections to the unannounced and, and you know, um, ad hoc testing, but I have to say that um, 
if you were comparing the PSM where you had, you know, this is an old paddle and a heavy, it was like so um, directed. I feel like um, the, the staff observing just kind of showing up and taking more of a natural um, mm -hmm. approach to it, um, not so structured, that it actually seems like a more realistic How about figure. No less than once a month. And if they decide they need but to I'm do it But I'm saying, like, often. it's not like a big show. It's it's right, at exactly. staff's direction. Yeah. They're yeah. gonna yeah. they're gonna go out and they're gonna right. take these. And it's I just think it gives us a better snapshot of what is at, like a, on a realistic day mm -hmm. of what play and, and what actually background. at different times. Right, and you don't want to announce in advance and then like players are like oh, I'm gonna play a little softer yes, today. That's what I'm saying. Is exactly. like just or vice versa. You know, like mm -hmm. oh I, I I think it would it gives a better fair representation of average play if you do it you uh do it at different times different days of the week and um it's mm -hmm. just it's, or it evolves organically on you your time spot, frame spot checks unannounced i unannounced. think that's really important i just don't think they should be scheduled i don't think they should i think it should be at staff's discretion and and not scheduled do you want a minimum of one a month I would recommend Not. more than one yeah, a I month. Think so. Do we want to put some kind of number I think, in there? Um, I mean, Minimum maybe a weekly. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think I it's like different like times of between day. Between now and you know, January, we only have more time to react to whatever your findings are. Well, well and maybe it's different. Like you do, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday type of deal, right? So but like you know, throughout you, the week. We weekly may be a little weekly. bit challenging. Okay, so yeah, no less than twice, twice a, month. a month. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And on different days, yep. so you'll you'll make sure that you do maybe one morning observation and one afternoon observation at least the once mm -hmm. a month and. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. The, the language would just be. No. So with the uh, unannounced assessments throughout the trial period, no less than two times a month at staff good. discretion. Mm -hmm. Is that yep. sum it up? Mm -hmm. How long um, do you anticipate that would take, Luis, to do something like that? Like, is that like an hour altogether, or uh, how long do you the do The testing it we did, because we, it well, it depends like, on how many, yeah, where, where it, you do it, because we tested at three sites, yeah, and that took us. It's probably about like closer to half hour. No, no, it was an hour. Per the, well, per, per site, site, though, like no, per, per side, address? No, per, per site it was about 15 minutes. It's pretty quick, I think. Yeah. The measuring the background sound, maybe it's done less frequently, but for longer duration because right. of the, the variation. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, could, I mean, that could be an hour or several hours at some point for someone to set up the equipment mm -hmm. and, and monitor it to get a good average background sound level. The, the it seems like different. Um, that's not, that's that, a different task. So that could right. be on a different schedule. Yeah. The, actually yeah. measuring the pickleball, like, Conceivably, it could take 10, 10 minutes or yep. less if once yeah. you know what you're doing. And you're, yeah, and that's why I, yeah, okay. I shared the 30 minute as course, worst case. Yeah. Yeah. I still am going with the intern. I don't know why. I love the volunteer aspect of um, <laughs> I like, yeah. I'd, I'd like for Commissioner yeah. Ruff to find a senior that would like to do that. That's what I'd really like. So the assumption in uh, to, you could be uh, open to the idea. Uh, the assumption <laughs> in 5A was a trial of up to six months, meaning if we could get this all in January. place by, mm -hmm. by June. Yeah, to do it through January. So we'd to have a basis. To, up through uh, January 1st, because January 1st. Yeah, it's when they expire. So, okay. but so I, f I feel like you've captured, you were capturing notes on this. I so what I have um, for recommendation five is that the, um, well we're going to add to recommendation one to purchase the up uh, the uh, more sophisticated meter, yep. um, and so we might want to add language here to. But we already have if recommendations one and four are accepted, then under five a. Um, implement in time manner, a trial manner, we'll add a sentence to say that they'll uh, have sta uh, at staff's discretion uh, un unannounced uh, sound assessments throughout the trial period no less than two times a month. I think that works pretty well. And then did wait? do we want to say something about at some point we need to establish some background? We need to set aside some time. That doesn't have to be done every month though, right? Maybe during that six month period, should that be done how many times? Um. Like I one. mean, I think several. So we have a really good sense of if it varies a lot. Three? Maybe once a month. Once I know. a month, so six. Yeah. It doesn't cost me anything. So yeah, <laughs> do it more. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, is that, that would be done on a separate day? Because that's different. Yeah. That's a different type of, you leave the, the equipment. Same. And 
mon- just monitor it? Or yeah, I mean the the other thing is that it can't actually be done while pickleball is being played because you just want to capture like the, the not pickleball. Mm-hmm. So if we were to do it to during pickleball it. times, you have to you have to have everyone stop playing for mm-hmm. you know however long you want to oh, measure it for. Okay. So it can be done though between eleven thirty and. Right. Uh, Two thirty. Well, there's no play. Mm-hmm. Right. That seems realistic too, because that's maybe when. I mean, it's not. People are still. And then out yeah. and about, they're not sleeping in the early morning. Yeah, I think you know to the extent that like the, there's a traffic pattern concern that somehow we're measuring it at noisier, or quieter times. Like we'd want to get a good range of background measurements to. Well, I, I suggest how long? A, a weekday, a couple, a weekday, and then uh, a weekend day, Sunday. For example. Well, we could do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday from now till January, one one time a month, one day a month. One 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 of those. Yeah, one is a Monday, one is a Tuesday. That would give us a and you could vary the time mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. um the, the question though is and one of the things that they had when PSM did it is they did it tiring the time they would have actually played, correct? That's right. The testing was Whereas during we the can't play do that hours. Because Can we, we do can't. it close to? We could, yeah. though. I mean, you could, but I'm, no. Well, I mean, I'm just saying that would mean that you'd have to have everyone off the courts. Yeah, not that's playing. not fair. Well, I don't know if it's fair or not. I think it's actually relevant to when they're actually playing. So your background noise right. should be relevant to the time that the play is happening. So, okay, I mean, and it's, it goes from what time? What time is it close in the after in the mornings? Eleven thirty. That seems reasonable. That if you took it at eleven thirty, it would be pretty. Comp- the background noise would be pretty comparable to. 10 30. All I mean, I'll say is that there's commuting going on <laughs> early in the day and that feeds off of Creek Road. I don't actually know, but I just, I don't know. I, I just want to call into question that there. What time does it open again? 8 30. So if we did one month at 8 o'clock, one, um, one mean, month at 11 30, yes. 30, and then we should, and then the next two cycles could be um, how long does it take? 30 minutes or an hour? Yeah, so I, thirty minutes before the afternoon play, and then the next month, thirty minutes after the mm-hmm. evening play is over. Right. That I mean, that seems reasonable. I mean, in the beginning and then after yeah. again for all those. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think also like if if we wanted at least a couple of those measurements to be during actual pickleball hours, like that you can post in advance and yeah, say, hey, for true. these thirty minutes, uh, there's no play on the courts because we're going to be fine. doing a background yeah, sound. Right. Measurement. It's only twice. Just yeah, if we did that twice. Yes. So we yeah. could do 30 minutes before it starts one month, mm-hmm. then 30 minutes after the morning session ends for the next month, and then 30 minutes before the afternoon play, and 30 minutes after, and then at your discretion, wherever those times fit in, in the next six months, two 30-minute um, recordings during one in the morning pickleball play and one in the afternoon. That seems like really fair. And right. then we can get an idea. Yeah, yeah, that really gives a good snapshot. So did you take that down, Louise? Because I know that was <laughs> yeah. a lot. I, I, and I you, can, you don't have to do me. it in that order. You know, whatever is um, <laughs> works for your schedule. I know that's a big ask, but yeah. I think that's really important. But what we want to add in here is not the specifics of all of right. that, but the fact that once a month right. during the for initial period. To, get, right. to gather six um sound tests of background noise um between now and january of 24 at at a range of times of day and days of week and i would i would like to to go ahead and see if the commission would be open to um considering because uh we are going into our busier season our summer season where we host camps um Mm -hmm. uh, if maybe uh, one of the ad hoc commissioners may be available to assist if we don't have a staff member to help during that time um, if we could do that, I think that would be a huge help. I, I think can't we answer. could do it together. I think, yeah. you know, that way, hopefully, we don't <laughs> yeah. arouse and any it, more and suspicions. You know, and it, it wouldn't, uh, <laughs> the, the, the point of that request, it would, staff wouldn't be, de- you know, delegating all of it. It's just when we would yeah, we, When you need support. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, no, it's either that or we're going to have to supervise the camps. No yes. problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just take your pick. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the sound testing. <laughs> Okay. Really fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's um, fine. So and uh, so in recomm- in five A, you want to say uh, we want to say at staff discretion, unannounced assessments during pickleball play, no twice. less than twice a month, and no twice in six months. No, no, no. Twice, a twice a month. month. This is the, the pickleball, pickleball sound. sound. This Not is the background. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. and uh, background sound measurements. Uh, 
six, once a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. At times designated through staff. No. Well, uh, or, I, or at staff's discretion, but you understand discretion. what we're... So every, both of those will be at staff's mm -hmm. discretion. It's one time a month. Uh, okay. And then I, we went through two already, which is to develop a plan. Yeah, develop and adopt. Yep. Um, we haven't discussed that much, or we're, we're good with that, but that is something that we're hoping... I think that's very important <laughs> as yeah, part of this recommendation. Right. We haven't spent a lot of time talking about it. We have it, not spent this much is, at all talking about it, but this is the meat yeah, of the, the next long stage. term, okay. right? Yeah. Well, if they accept our recommendations, then I assume it'll come back to us for that process. Yeah, the ad hoc committee is not going away. <laughs> <laughs> well, or we could do it we as a full board. I mean, we, could we can, <laughs> but <laughs> there might be some. It, it is difficult to um, to post when the full commission is going to be out and about, so the ad hoc does serve a huge purpose like that. Thank you. But I, this is an incredible place to start from, and and I appreciate all the language in here about the various different groups to partner with, because uh, there, you know, we've had quite a few meetings, and we've had a lot of different come people come forward saying they're interested, they want, right. they're ready to raise money, they're ready to do the work, and I'm super mm -hmm. excited and very appreciative because. That is so often how things happen in our Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, constructive energy. Yeah, yeah. So, I, and I think that's why we just put in expeditiously. But we do think yeah. that there's such a momentum, or there's a danger that that momentum is going to be lost if we don't move quickly. And I, I don't know. I'll just throw this out. I don't know what we could be doing while the upper level process is being carried out. But if there's any um, you know, research or anything that we could be doing, uh, looking at local, other local projects and so forth, just to start to start the ball rolling. That might help to keep the uh, interest and enthusiasm going. Well, I, I think that sometimes an ad hoc committee isn't just to. We've had ad hoc committees that have included all different types of groups, interest, you know, members right. of the community and different groups interested in getting projects done have come together. So I, I kind of feel like that's the next stage mm -hmm. is to try and gather your your, your constituencies or, or the people interested in moving mm -hmm. forward in the organizations in a room and starting to have those discussions after this goes to council i i think that's a kind of a natural next step okay to invite everybody into the mm -hmm. if, if once this has gone to council and council accepts that that's the path that we're you know trying to move forward with and approves that i think the next step I, from my perspective is to have a, a new type of ad hoc committee mm -hmm. that makes sense Morph so, it into the next stage. <laughs> so, uh, so what do we do now? We need a motion. So okay. we need a motion. Um, <clears throat> I think that um, accepting the um, the attachment A, the twenty eight pages with the edits that um, Karen just read when she was rereading. We do a motion that is to accept this with the addition of the discussion. We should, I think we should recommend the adoption of the ad hoc committee recommendation. I move mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that we adopt the ad hoc committee recommendations um, as with the noted changes and forward on the complete report as well to the city council. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. We'll call. Commissioner, uh, Vice Chair Inner? Yes. Chair Taylor? Yes. Commissioner Wilson? Yes. Commissioner Fryers? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Okay, <laughs> we're not done yet. No, no, so. but that was <laughs> worthy of yet another thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I know we have, an, we have a public speaker who's ready to probably go home. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> We're on um, 6C, uh, Parks and Rec Commission. No, I'm sorry, 6B, <laughs> the Soul Park. Oh my gosh. The Soul Park uh, Partnership um, recommendation is that the commission determine whether to form an ad hoc committee or work as a whole on recommendation, recommendations for council's consideration regarding the partnership with the County of Ventura for use of Soul Park. Um, would you like to speak on it? Well, I'm not opposed to you well, going first. So I got to get to the market to pick up some things for dinner. Okay. <laughs> I got to get text from my West wife. Ridge How long soon. are you going to be there? <laughs> uh, look, I just wanted to come and say, since I was one of the people, maybe the person that initiated this thing initially, you know, to start with, that uh, uh, you know, please proceed with whatever is most facilitates getting it done. Because the the uh, as you uh, I couldn't I couldn't help but being struck listening to the whole discussion, how much easier it would be if you had the Soul Park facility, and I can tell you that when uh, 
some of us in the former council met with the uh, county people, including uh, the supervisor, who was most enthusiastic about it. Uh, you know, we talked about how the, the base area that they would be willing to let to build a facility on is already there, which dramatically lowers the cost of putting in a place. And there is a group of people, I think, just as you said, momentum ready to raise money uh, if the uh, venue is arranged. And I, I just would hope that you proceed as expeditiously as possible. Uh, because there's also such this uh, a pent up demand in the whole valley for recreational resources that uh, that Soul Park re uh, represents. So, you know, whatever uh, could be done to move forward to start being able to have a uh, stimulate the kind of uh, energy and financial support uh, that uh, would accelerate this. It's not. You kept saying long term. I don't think it's necessarily all that long term. Uh, once you could, uh, you know, work out the details of the partnership, um, I, I, that I, I was, I was a little dismayed. It's all that long-term talk, you know, because it's it may not be that much of a long-term once you the arrangement is is set up. Um, and the last thing I want to say is that the school district needs money, obviously, and <laughs> so I think a proposal if the city could find its way to saying, um, we'd like to give you some money if you will give us some space, either for more parking behind the skate park, or which is already in the lease arrangement, by the way, that the city has with the school district. It has a lease arrangement for expanding the parking at a specified price per space. Uh, they, they desperately need money, <laughs> and uh, uh, if they might be willing to, you know, especially if it was a revocable situation, you know, uh, that, uh, uh, they might be even more willing to move forward with it on. So anyway, I just wanted to say that, and I wanted to say something that somebody who's really helped me understand the history. I love the people we have in this community, but uh, Drew Mashburn's been talking to me with his many decades of experience with county parks, and about, he says, you know, I've been, my whole life I felt like that facility was underutilized. I was so excited we could finally do something about it. And he knows kind of his way around, even at this since he's been retired for so long, give me really. I've benefited from his uh, talking with him about history, and um, that's the kind of person to help. Maybe get, ask if you form an ad hoc committee, see if somebody like that might want to help and uh, get this thing moving. Okay, so yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We actually have a administrative report. Would you like to discuss that? Sure. Present that. Sure. Um, I'll just uh, summarize it, uh, keep it short. <laughs> so uh, at its last meeting, the, the commission received an update from staff regarding the uh, request uh, to be part of the process um, of forming a partnership with the county uh, for use of Soul Park. During that time, staff noted that at its February 28th uh, meeting, city council discussed and deliberated and ultimately agreed to include uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission in the process. Input provided by the commission would be relayed to uh, city council for consideration. At that point, city council uh, or their designee uh, would then work directly um, uh, with the county to, to finalize the, the partnership. Um, and with that being said, um, this agenda item is an opportunity for the commission to discuss and determine whether it wants to work in the ad hoc committee or as a whole. I, I think that we tried it as an ad hoc before. We had an ad hoc to deal with Soul Park and um, working with the county, do you remember? I think you and I were sitting, we didn't it just, really, felt like it's, it, it just never got started. Yeah, I think, I mean, um, I, 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 I like doing it here is kind of, I, I mean, they both have their functions. Obviously this ad hoc committee, they did so much work and the details were so important that they needed to do their work um, independent of the, you know, public's well, eye, so to speak. But well, I, I think it's, I think what will move faster is I think an ad hoc would be good to pose the questions mm -hmm. that we've already discussed and move on those in a much faster process over the time of a month mm -hmm. versus waiting a month, waiting a yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, that month. is a benefit. So I think the benefit right now to having an ad hoc committee is to, to gather the information to come back to the commission. And mm -hmm. I think we have some, I mean, we've already put the questions forward in our meetings, it feels like to me, quite a few of them, mm -hmm. and the things that we would like clarification on. Maybe Why it's taken so long. Right. But, <laughs> that short, could be one of the questions for those <laughs> council well, members that, that are watching tonight. That and, you know, what the agreement is. And there's certain right. things 
we have very clear questions about, mm -hmm. and so I, I think of conditions of use for also for those that are watching. Yes, variety, variety <laughs> of different things. Yes. Um, okay. So I think that for expediency, because I I, I would support that. Would be good. Okay. Um, do I have any volunteers? I'm, I'm happy to volunteer. I don't know if um, there's a minimum requirement or if we do we need to have two we commissioners just can't or do more than two. We just can't do more than two. Mm -hmm. Would you like to um, do that also, yeah. since these are they're on they're busy and um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're minus one tonight. Um, okay, are you I'm down for that? Okay, yeah. can I get a, a motion for that? Do we need a motion? Probably should have a motion. Yes. Uh, I will move to. Is it a nomination or to form, to form it a ad hoc? A motion. A motion to form. All right, I'll, I'll move to form an ad hoc committee uh, to work with city council on Seoul Park comprised of Commissioner Taylor and Commissioner Indner. Okay, I'll second. How convenient that the ad hoc of the is <laughs> first and second. <laughs> Louise, will you play, take the role, please? Commissioner Wilson? Yes. Commissioner Firestone? Yes. Chair Taylor? Yes. Vice Chair Edner? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. okay. Now we're on to C. Now we're on to C. <laughs> okay. So we have another administrative report. Um, I don't know who put this agenda together this late <laughs> hour, but well, you can move through it pretty quickly. I have some input to share, but will you present the um, administrative report, please? Of course. Um, and before doing so, I'd like to note that this uh, same request for lack of better words went to to all the commissions um and uh so at its oh, this is all the other city yeah commissions so are. all the commissions yeah re received this update and um had a discussion on this item as well so at its uh, february 28th meeting city council discussed the size of each commission and inquired whether the commissions uh, should operate under a five or seven uh, member body size at the direction of city council, this agenda is an opportunity for the commission to discuss whether it wishes to uh, increase the number of commissioners from five to seven. Presently, um, section uh, 2-4102 of the city's municipal code identifies five members and one non-youth, one non-voting uh, youth member for the Parks and Recreation Commission. While the commission operates under this um, structure in the past, uh, the commission did operate under a seven uh, member body, uh, which most recently what I was able to find was uh, back in 2015. Uh, during that time, the commission was uh, composed of six adult members and one youth uh, member, all whom were voting members. Uh, the purpose, or for purposes of establishing a quorum in voting, typically commissions are comp uh, composed of an odd uh, number of members, uh, no less than five. Uh, should the commission wish to continue operating um, under its current structure, it may absolutely do so. Um, however, if it wishes to uh, increase the number of members, um, that's something definitely can, can submit a, a request to council for consideration. Hi, go ahead. I have been on it both ways. I have too. <laughs> uh, I uh, remember we kind of had to, I'm, there was a, um, a struggle well, when we were at seven. I would honestly say if ever there were a time to go to seven, mm -hmm. I'd say now because <laughs> when we have big initiatives coming up, the seven is really nice. Yeah. And I would happily go back to a voting youth member. Yeah. I, we all, I think. I think the engagement is really nice, yeah. although I do, um, it, it, on some of the issues that we have facing us, um, there is a lot of pressure, um, um, you know, um, it's, it's been a lot with the community being um, at odds. So um, sometimes that worries me that that's a bit much for our over all the years. Not that, that Commissioner Ruff couldn't handle yeah. it. I'm so saying. How old, so obviously like I'm graduating. Oh my God, sorry. <laughs> um, so like, is it the same thing as like a junior to senior, the two year thing? I think that's fine. They're old enough. They're we actually lowered the age one year. We had to right. go down to a sophomore, which was a very mature sophomore, right? I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because we couldn't find a suitable senior yeah. or junior, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's also when we had seven. In fact, I should look at the, I need to go look what at the What year did right we now? go from five to seven? Was it 20? Uh, or seven to five? Seven to five. Um, no, it was 16 at, uh, when I was looking through the, the minutes. Mm. Seven? Or seven to five. 
So I would be happy to request that we move back to seven, which is one more adult member, and then um, allow the uh, youth member to be voting. How um, did the council give any indication as to how the um, commissions that increase would be um, comprised? Like, would it be another city um, appointee or a non? Um, We're at two now, right? I'm a non non city um, commissioner. So Aaron, are you non-city or are you I'm non-city. So I think we're always at two, yeah. whether we're five or seven. Yep. Yeah, in this, I think so the two other. City. So you no, 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 two, two out of the city. Mm -hmm. So a minimum, so the, the other thing that was included is the current, um, or the establishment of the commission. So it says a minimum of three members of the commission must have primary residence and be domiciled. Oh, I didn't see that. Where does a see that? A minimum of three. That's on the, there was two things. There was a duplicate and on the duplicate. Oh, uh, I didn't get there, the duplicate. There's the actual um, uh, members. Oh. And, and the way I remembered that it used to be was no more than two from out, outside of the city. Yeah. It, I think, yeah. It also in here it says full time high school student, so it doesn't say junior senior. We changed that yeah. last time. Yeah, but it's so to if, full time if, high school. If this language is kept, and I, I guess that could be changed to say more. I don't know. Does the commission have the ability to change the residence requirement, or is that a we city have to, decision? We'd have to make a recommendation. Yeah, I mean, if we, a recommendation we could make a make recommendation. Yeah, to city council. And I think what we could do is have them look at the old language. Mm -hmm. If yeah. we're okay with what we used to do before when we were seven with a voting youth member, that language exists somewhere. Yeah. Well, I, I would support full-time high school student yeah. as opposed to junior, senior. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and that can be the, the judgment of Where whoever is yeah. selecting the youth commissioner if, if they feel like I'm fine with maturity that. is an issue. Where does, um, do I? Don't know. Has to, I wonder if it has to be in the city. Oh, yes. Right. He's city. The city. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that's our third. So yep. then. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the other commissions, at least of, I've noticed, I've done not a study, but on the other commissions, there's almost always at least two outside the study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in some mm -hmm. cases, I think it's if limited. there are a bigger yep. commission, there may be more. But. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I thought. I thought historically, it was, we 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 never had more than two. From the outside, but that's something to look, look up. But I mean, uh, I mean, I guess there's pros and cons to both. But saying a minimum leaves open that you can have more. I know. I would prefer myself that it be more city. Yes, mm -hmm. always balanced more city. And if you if we don't change that when we change to seven, um, you so a minimum, a, like a minimum of four. Or is that what you're thinking? I'm sure that there's already some structure on how that, that that's done. I, mm, okay. I, I mean, I would have to. It, I think no more than two from out of the city would work for me. But but I the think. The youth commissioner wouldn't be factored into that, I don't think. Right? Because. I think on ours, or, historically, it might have been. But I don't think it. I think that's something that we should flex on. I don't mm. think that should. So if it were. So it, what you're saying to do six adults with one youth commissioner who's a voting mm -hmm. commissioner. That puts us at seven. That puts us at seven. Um, and that out of the seven, excluding the student, that the just two would be outside and mm -hmm. four would be within. Yeah, I think that's a good balance. But again, four to two. all plus we're asking is for them to a, consider a to bump us back. Mm -hmm. So it may come back to us again to look at before it happens. I don't, is that, I think it was a, a recommendation to let staff know whether we're interested. the interest. Right. Right. That is correct. So I guess we could let staff know that we're interested, mm -hmm. and that our interest in is go, is in going. If everyone agrees, is in going to seven with a voting youth member. So yeah. adding an additional, uh, is it? Yeah. And keeping the language that it's any full time high school student. Yeah. yeah. I think that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. I think you know what uh, Sage said about. Uh, the advantage of having seven is, is you can get more like ad hoc committee work done. And I definitely see that, you know, it's like <laughs> I, we can't always uh, put in this much time to a, an ad hoc committee. If there was kind of a pool of commissioners that were all kind of taking turns, putting in that kind of time, mm -hmm. you know, that could be pretty productive. I, I feel like in the past it wasn't that case. It wasn't like everyone was. I think it's project based. Know. Yeah. Like when the playground hit, we were so right. busy. Yes. Libby Bowl, all kinds of work going on. And yeah. So, and I, I would hope that our next endeavor is 
pickleball. <laughs> and that, you know, we will have something, it tends to, it tends to accelerate. Well, the collaboration at Soul Park because it's going to involve a lot of staff programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. New opportunities too. If that I feel, works I feel like out, well. now might be good. I, I agree with you though. There are times where we were seven and very little was going <laughs> right, on. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, well, and I, with going on with OUSD it may open up that's other true. opportunities. Yeah. For yeah. Campuses, yeah. You know, well, I, I, yeah, I think. Fields and stuff. Yeah. I, I think with the things on the horizon, moving to seven is fine. And I've been a project manager in a lot of places. And if we get to a point where we're not all busy, I can find work. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I think also in the past, I've kind of like when we had seven, we always had vacancies and I saw that as an issue, but I don't think it, it's just, it is what it is. Like yeah. we have a commission of seven. Sometimes it's just five of us plus two vacancies and, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And I think we discussed at length, but if the youth member is voting, then they would count as a, um, part of a quorum. Mm -hmm. yeah. I yeah. think, um, between now and then, can you look into why we changed it? Was there some new regulation? Oh, no. I can't remember it why. It was not a regulation. It, Did it there... do with age and voting? No. I mean, that was nothing ever we ever investigated. Mm -hmm. it, it had more to do with going to five. Because going oh. to five... Then we don't the only way we could adults. do it, ex okay, we, could, we it. couldn't, we, that, that did so cause that a pressure point non with having, uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So do we need a motion for staff or is this just a discussion item? Uh, yes. So uh, city council is going to go ahead and receive a uh, report uh, from all the commissions. So um, yeah, if we could have a, a motion on uh, the commission's preference on what they'd like to go okay. ahead and submit to, to council. All right. Would someone like to propose a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we uh, increase, we recommend that the commission increase to seven and the youth member be a voting member. A second. second. I'll second that. Uh, Chair Taylor? Yes. Commissioner Frierson? Yes. Vice Chair Inner? Yes. Commissioner Wilson? Yes. Motion passes. Almost. Yeah. Someday. <laughs> Soon. Just after Soon. you leave, Ella. Yeah. <laughs> um, and le well, I'll make quick work of this. On um, we have informational items. We have a um, we have a short recreational report from Luis. Yes. Very short, right? It's very yes, short. Very short. Summarized. <laughs> yes, very short. Yes, softball season is now underway. That the rain is gone. <laughs> uh, next week, the department is going to be hosting spring camp uh, for children. Uh, in addition, the department is excited to announce new offering for seniors, including a knitting circle, a table tennis club, billiards club, and jigsaw club. These offerings are going to be free uh, for community members and are designed for those 50 years and older. Of course, we welcome all adults. Uh, each offering will take place on Fridays from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, first Friday will be um, Billiards Club. Second uh, Friday is going to be the Jigsaw Puzzle Club. And third is going to be Table Tennis. And fourth is going to be the Knitting Circle. In addition, uh, the department's excited to uh, announce a new offering for adults, which is drop-in dodgeball. This offering is backed by popular demand and will for be adults? available. Uh -huh. For adults? Uh-huh. For adults? You know, it's new. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be available uh, starting Friday, May 4th. Um, as with all drop-in activities, it will be a $3 fee to play, and it will be held in the gymnasium. Uh, in addition to that, we'd also like to go ahead and share that the department's uh, open house event is going to be is right around the corner and will take place on Saturday, May 20th from 10 to 1. All Just, the yeah, <laughs> a, sl a slight deviation from the past, just that one hour. Uh, as with previous years, there's going to be demonstration, raffle prizes, food trucks, informational booths, and uh, various families' activities. Um, we welcome all to, to join and come out, and if any commissioners would like to come out and volunteer, please feel free to reach out to me. Sorry, uh, I missed the date. I'm sorry. Uh, Saturday, May 20th. May 20th. Uh, this month, the department would like to highlight the Tai Chi program uh, led by longtime instructor Clifton Gore. Tai Chi is a medita <coughs> meditative um, martial art that involves slow a slow series of choreographed movements. The program offers many health benefits, including stress reduction, flexibility, better balance, improved eye-hand coordination, breathing, in addition to mu muscular strength. Um, the offering is offered uh, twice a week at the department. Uh, first session is on Mondays at 7 o'clock, and the second is on Saturdays at 9 a.m., 
both take place in the multi-purpose room. Those that are interested in participating are encouraged to reach out to the department. And with that, wraps up the, the update. Thank you. <laughs> Dodgeball sounds very exciting. That sounds fun. <laughs> that just took me way back. <laughs> <laughs> what is table tennis? Uh, ping pong. Why don't you just call it ping pong? Well, it's actually <laughs> table tennis. Oh. Really? Okay. <laughs> I've never heard it. I thought that's what it was, but I was like, no, because you would just say <laughs> ping pong. Is that offensive or something? I don't know. No. no. Okay. No. Just as a thing. What is it's the Olympics use? I don't know. Table tennis. Table tennis. <laughs> Ping pong. Really? Ping pong. Thank yeah. you. Known as ping pong. Okay. It should actually be called table. Ta like, ta what is that deal? It should be called table pickleball. Table pickleball. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. The, the, the tinking. Okay. Um, any other, we've had a very uh, extensive meeting. Is there any other commission reports or comments? Well, I would just like to thank the commission for going, for sticking with us and letting us go through all this tonight and having a really good discussion. I, I really appreciate that. I, you know, and uh, it was a lot of information to go through, it's a lot to absorb. Uh, I'm personally glad to have gotten most of it out on paper. So I got a little more brain room, uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you for your support. I, you know, it, uh, we did move as quickly as we could, but it was a lot to try to absorb. And uh, I actually appreciate the comment that, or a couple of comments that we've seemed to have, you know, hit the, the sweet spot in that we're, we can't please everybody, uh, but we can do the best we can. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'm like really to. proud of the commission um, <laughs> and, and the ad hoc, but yeah. to, just to not have so much contention in the community and, and try and serving all sides and come to some reasonable um, suggestions, uh, it, it's, what we're here for and it does it feels really um although I, you know i didn't put as much work into this but it, it it feels really good to be a part of the package going to council so thank you oh good yeah um i <laughs> echoing what, what karen said also i wanted to thank karen and louise um karen put in a ton of work on this uh doing kind of all of the the research and then it was definitely an asset to have a historian <laughs> <laughs> on the, the committee uh so thank you for for doing all that and luis too for facilitating all of this in the midst of everything else that you do Luis was always available for us has always been available on his day off he was out sound <laughs> testing with us so yeah. thank you yeah no it, it was a pleasure and you know that that's echoed right back uh, thank you for all the work you know but both both did it was it was a pleasure working and uh it's it's uh, something that is still in progress and, you know, we're happy to collaborate <laughs> on a continued <laughs> basis. But, yeah, no, thank you for all the hard work. I have to say, I don't know that we officially announced that you are no longer our interim yeah. yes. supervisor. You're oh, permanent. Yes, did we I say did. that last it's meeting? A, I couldn't yeah. remember, so I want to congratulate you and yeah, say I yeah. am so happy <laughs> that you are permanently the recreation supervisor and no longer an interim. And thank <laughs> you for all the time. Hard work. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Glad you. that they think, figured that out. And thanks to you guys. That report, not only was it just so well done, you guys did a great job of making it very readable and very approachable to anyone interested in understanding what we're doing. It is all right there. And I, I really appreciate that. Very and that thorough. is a skill that I, I admire. <laughs> thank you. Like I said, we thank sat you. on the first ad hoc. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, I'm humbled, okay. Um, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> um, okay. On the future agenda items, um, can we have um, um, some historical um, data to go over about commission appointments and interviews? Because it used to be that one commissioner would sit in on the interviews and um, as part of like a panel, mm -hmm. and then it moved to more of an appointment. Um, the council appoints. There's a different yeah. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a different process. Yeah. And is that the process that they're going to use? Is there any indication? Um, I liked sitting in on them and hearing just how, I mean. It's a rotating council yeah. appointment now. Mm -hmm. And is that how the new council is going to do it? Do we know? That, that's they adopted yeah, that, that is the adopted practice. Mm. That, okay. Yeah. I was just curious. I just wanted to give input yeah. that. It seems like even uh, being able for someone on the commission to provide input to that council member, even if they're not there for the interviews, about kind of what would be helpful to yeah. our commission would be for. productive. Yeah. And do we know which, which council will be up next? I yeah. don't know. I don't have that information okay. right off hand at this moment. But that might be interesting for next month to know for us yeah. Yeah. where our next yeah. appointments yeah. are coming from. Well, 
And yeah. also on a future agenda, I don't know when, but I, I really would like for us to try to have a discussion about um, some kind of vision and bigger plan for the commission. I mean, <laughs> I feel like we're we're kind of reactionary. No, I we've only I've only been talking about this for eighteen years. Okay. Well, but no, I think let's get it on there again. Let's I, get it. I mean, I you know because I because we don't have a master plan. Right. For the entirety of our system, we exactly. have master plans in small places right. with information. So master, I mean, the, yeah. the what the Arts Commission did recently with their visioning process and was very impressive. I know, and I know they're very different from the other commissions. They're very different from us. But on the other hand, as we tried to point out in the report, we probably touch many more lives <laughs> and it seems like it would be nice for all of us to have a, a better sense of uh, kind of where, where we'd like things to go and I think it would be helpful to you and to the department so if we could somehow at least start the conversation and yep. see where we might go with that and, and I also hope that pickleball will be on there if they let's have it as a future agenda item if there's feedback to come back to us at that oh point. sure yes i think um, we have that as a standing and, okay right. and then i know that uh we'll have sports courts coming back next that's already on there mm -hmm. next month mm -hmm. okay okay so are we officially discharged of our pickleball duty for right now <laughs> no no or, no okay. no that are is we, not and do not put that down in the record that is not what we discussed be disbanded for a month? no we said that the ad hoc would stay <laughs> intact back. in Absolutely. case there was additional questions that come back no, let me rephrase that do we have any deliverables next month <laughs> uh, no deliverables okay. until after the next council meeting okay. but it is still very much alive it is not the the ad hoc is still can, there can i just kind of share a little it's really a historian humor, so you guys might not laugh, but we would not have any of the problems that we have, pickleball and otherwise, if Mr. Libby had just been a little more generous. <laughs> Given just a little the more. The unintended consequences of mm -hmm. him giving a central park. <laughs> exactly. Centered around all. Anyway. Okay, well, okay. we are at 8.30. I will officially adjourn this meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Oh. Wow, that was one of our longer. That was an excellent report. I read it and understood it all.